hey, my name's Phil. I'm just a normal guy living my boring teenage life. Some call me a nerd. Well, yeah, I am a straight-A student. I don't have many friends, probably because they're jealous of my grades, but that's it. I'm far from a nerd. I think I'm pretty cool, and I mean, I look okay, and I'm funny. If not, then the coolest kids in school wouldn't have invited me to their party, right? I guess every school has a group of popular rich kids. At my school, there was a group of four cool guys. Dylan, Mark, Jared, and Nick. They always have the latest iPhones, the best cars, and all the girls look at them with heart eyes. It started with Dylan. He was in the same Spanish class as me, and his grades were pretty bad. One day after class, he walked over to me and asked me to do his homework. In return, he would give me a ride home in his cool car. I agreed. The homework was a piece of cake anyway. That day, I got to sit in such a nice car for the first time ever. I enjoyed the ride as much as the admiration from all the girls as we drove away from the campus. Dylan got a good grade on his homework, so he told his friends. And they asked me to do their homework too. In exchange, I got to hang out with them. I didn't mind being a nobody at school. And I did have friends, but I couldn't deny that it was fun to hang out with the cool kids. I even got invited over to Mark's massive three-story home. Mark is like the alpha. They always met up at his house, probably because his place was so amazing. He had a pool, gym, cinema, and a games room. Mark always ordered loads of pizza, and he never made me pay for it. Life was pretty amazing. I got to have a taste of the rich life. I knew I was still the outsider. Sometimes I'd walk into the room and they'd all fall silent. This made me feel a bit awkward, but I didn't think all that much of it. I mean, I was the new guy to their group. I guess they just needed a little time to get to know me properly. One day, this new kid at school called Kyle asked me to be his partner for a science project. He seemed a bit awkward. He was this big guy with an outdated style. His t-shirt was always tucked into baggy jeans. Hey, I know I'm not the most fashionable guy at school, but even I know this isn't a good look. Kyle didn't talk much about his family. I only knew that his parents were strict and didn't allow friends at home. He never even waited for me to walk to the bus station together. He just disappeared after school. Strange kid. But we both liked classic rock, which none of the other kids could relate to. So we clicked really fast. Meanwhile, I still hung out often with the cool kid squad. I also asked Kyle if he would like to join us, but he awkwardly refused. I presumed he didn't think he was cool enough. He did seem very interested in them, though, and asked me loads of questions. Every time I told him about what fun stuff I did with the squad, he seemed to brighten up and he asked me to tell him more. Poor guy. So I hung out with the cool kids more and bragged about everything to Kyle. Where we went, how they sometimes have red eyes and suffer mood swings. How I can never stay at Mark's place past 9 p.m. as they always have to do something. Or about their continuous phone calls that they say are for sports betting and how they make me calculate and take notes for it. I really sounded like I was so close with them and I was pretty proud of this fact. One time I was at Mark's and I walked back from the restroom to overhear them talking about throwing a big party at a club downtown the night after. Oh, a party? I asked. They looked a bit off, but then Mark stuttered, yeah, yeah, you can come too. I was so excited. It'd be my first party ever. I might finally be able to find a girlfriend there. I rushed home to find my most fly outfit while I called Kyle to brag about it. Kyle didn't sound too excited for me. Instead, he was Mr. Serious, which was such a buzzkill. I put his attitude down to jealousy, but this kind of bugged me. It wasn't my fault he was shy and awkward. Now, let's talk about the club party. It was at this really trendy venue with an indoor pool, a diamond-encrusted bar, and there were beautiful women walking around in tiny bikinis. I was chilling in the VIP lounge with the boys, an exotic-looking cocktail in hand. This was the life. Out of nowhere, there was a loud bang as the cops suddenly burst in with guns. They told me to put our hands on our heads. I was terrified. I had no idea what was going on. I was shut in an interrogation room at the police station. I panicked. Was I in big trouble, even though I had no idea what I was in big trouble for? Then, Kyle entered the room. Only, he was wearing a police uniform. I stared at him in confusion, and he just gave me an awkward look. Turns out Kyle 
wasn't actually called Kyle. And he wasn't a high school student. Instead, he was an undercover cop. I felt betrayed. Was he using me all this time? Did he frame me to arrest me? Was our friendship all fake? Then he told me that the four cool kids are actually related to a gang and are part of a drug trafficking chain. He went undercover to find the evidence he needed to arrest them once and for all. It turns out all my information had helped him do just that. He knew I was a good guy and didn't know anything about it, so he tried to pull me out of this ASAP before I sank deeper into it. I was free to go. <sighs> he then introduced himself for real this time. His name was Sam. He was 24, and he was married with a daughter. I'm still friends with Sam, and even drop by his house now and again to play video games and listen to classic rock tunes. It does worry me that I unknowingly got the cool kids into deep trouble. Sometimes I wake up in the night and freak out that their families will come and punish me for what happened. Sam says I will be fine, as nothing is traceable to me. I still can't quite believe that hanging out with the cool kids ended the way it did. It's safe to say that I won't be agreeing to do anyone else's homework again. Although I may make an exception if a cute girl asks me. I do miss certain aspects about hanging out with the cool kids, such as the nice cars and their lavish homes, but I guess I'm okay with just being me. Hey, I'm Duncan, but my friends all call me Dunk. I was so excited about finally leaving home and experiencing all the freedom and fun of college. I got lucky with my roommate, as Andy's a great guy. We have similar taste in music, so we spent our time going to concerts. Because of his popularity, he received invites to all the best parties, and I got to tag along. As amazing as being Andy's friend was, it also had its problems. You see, Andy's a handsome guy, and the girls couldn't resist his chiseled jawline and muscly physique. I wasn't exactly ugly or anything, but next to him, I felt mediocre at best. He was basically a girl magnet, and I became invisible to them. To be honest, I found myself secretly jealous of him, and this made me take a step back from the parties and the concerts. Even though I was obviously making excuses not to hang out with him, Andy remained nice to me. Some of his admirers gifted him chocolate and candies. Andy's probably the only person I know who doesn't like sweets, so he gave them all to me. Jackpot! I suppose that with time and lots of sweets, I began to mellow down. Andy was a great guy, and it wasn't his fault that he was a stud. So it wasn't fair to punish him for this. Things went back to normal and I took my place as Andy's average looking sidekick. Then I met Rosie. She's cute, funny, and super sweet. It wasn't long before I developed the biggest crush on her. The problem was, she was pretty much in love with Andy. Rosie was always showing up with gifts for him and going out of her way to flirt with him at parties. But he remained uninterested in her. One time at a party, I saw her sitting alone outside. She looked upset for some reason, so I gave her a drink and tried to cheer her up. She went on about how much she loved Andy. Then she looked at me with wide eyes and begged me to help her get to know him better. This sucked, but I couldn't exactly tell Rosie how much I liked her. At least helping her out meant I'd get to spend more time with her. Rosie and I began to hang out more, and in turn, Andy hung out with us too. I don't think Rosie liked the concerts we went to, but her face lit up every time Andy rubbed shoulders with her or shot her a smile. It was a weird dynamic, but it worked. At least until the evening Rosie drunkenly confessed her love to Andy. He turned her down, and after that, things were super awkward between them. Not long after that, Andy started dating this girl called Belinda. This upset Rosie, but she tried not to show it. The four of us went out for a seriously awkward dinner together, so we can meet her properly. I couldn't stop staring at Rosie, as she was in the sexy lace dress, but she only looked at Andy as if he's the only one in this room. Andy and Belinda went home after that, but Rosie dragged me to a bar and forced me to drink shots. Then she cried on my shoulder about how much she loved Andy and how Belinda was no good for him. It was weird, as a part of me was glad to be close with Rosie, but it was also hard comforting her, when all she did was go on about my best friend. Belinda always bought Andy loads of chocolate bars, and he'd always chuck them over at me. Once I asked him, if you don't like them, then why don't you tell her? He stuttered a little. Nah, it's, it's no big deal. Besides, I've got you to eat them for me. Belinda didn't come over all that much. In fact, Andy didn't seem to spend all that much time with her at all. This didn't go unnoticed by Rosie, who thought their relationship was kind of strange. 
Andy had saved Belinda's phone number as just her name, nothing cute. Also, when they walked around campus, they stayed kinda apart, at least until anyone they knew saw them. Then they immediately cozied up to each other. Rosie got it into her head that their relationship was fake, and that he was only doing it to make her jealous. I wasn't sure if I believed this or not, but I guess it kinda made sense. I expected Andy and Belinda to break up, only they didn't. By the end of college, they were still together, much to Rosie's annoyance. Meanwhile, Rosie dated a few guys, but it all ended in bad breakups, and it was always me who was there to console her. Once, she got upset and drank too much, then blurted out how she must be an awfully ugly person. I laughed and told her that was crazy, as she had no idea just how beautiful she was. She moved in closer to me, and for a few seconds, I actually thought she was going to kiss me. But then she turned her head away and said, Dunk, you're the sweetest guy. Hmm, maybe if we're both single after graduation, then we could date. I just forced a smile. I didn't take what she said seriously, as she was very drunk. She probably wouldn't even remember saying it. She passed out and I had to carry her home, where I had to explain to three separate groups of people that she was my friend and I wasn't trying to assault her. After that, I tried to keep my distance from her. My heart just couldn't take it anymore. At our farewell graduation party, Rosie came and said her goodbyes to me. Before she left, she kissed me on the cheek and said, Looks like we're both single. Call me sometime. Then she winked at me. So it turns out she did remember what she said to me. And she meant it. On our last day in our place, Andy chucked me a chocolate bar. I jokingly told him, You need to start to learn to eat it because from tomorrow, I won't be here to help you. He let out a thoughtful sigh, then sat down. Actually, I do love sweets, but I gave them to you because you love them, and I, er, I love you, and I have done ever since we first met. I tried to push the feelings away, but it didn't seem to work. I know you like Rosie. That's why I faked the relationship so that you'd have a chance with her. I'm sorry for dropping this bomb on you, but I needed to get it off my chest before we left. I stared at him with a confused look on my face. At first, I thought he was joking, but then I realized he was being deadly serious. All this time, and I had no idea how he really felt. So now both Rosie and Andy like me. What's going on? I feel so conflicted, so I haven't contacted either of them yet. The problem is, I can't stop thinking about Andy. I'm missing him far more than Rosie. Could I be bisexual? I've never doubted my sexuality before, but this has got me all confused. Please help me out as I don't know what to do next. I'm Jerome. I'm a good Catholic boy. My parents brought me up to respect my religion, be kind toward others, take care of my appearance, be gentle in temperament, study hard, and take part in activities at school. Many girls at school like me. Their cute smiles in my direction and haze as they twizzle with their hair tells me that much. Some of these girls are pretty and all, but they're missing a special charm or something. I just don't like them in that way. My friends think I'm crazy, especially when the prettiest girl in school, Molly Summers, asked me out. And I said no. Well, I'm not crazy. It's just I've never met one girl who can captivate my heart until, until I met Jess. Actually, I have heard the name Jess before. She was a rebellious tomboy with short, scruffy hair. She was nearly always late to class and often said rude things to the teachers. Not only did she have a liking for breaking the rules, but she even led a gang of troublemaker boys in school. This always secretly made me laugh. These rowdy boys couldn't see how lame they looked being under the control of a girl. Although I heard her name for a long time, I never thought that one day I would encounter her. This was a gloomy Monday morning. I managed to miss the bus, so I had to run to school. Running late and terrified about getting detention, I was rushing at full speed from the entrance to the classroom. I ran around the corner and banged face first into Jess. She screamed out, then fell on top of me. We banged our heads painfully and our lips touched. Too embarrassed, we stood up and ran to the classroom without saying a word. Okay, so I didn't expect my first kiss to go like that. It was so awkward. The next day, Jess's rowdy boys were waiting for me outside school. They interrogated me for stealing Jess's first kiss. I tried explaining to them what happened, but they didn't listen. Instead, they tipped out the contents of my rucksack, then told me to stay away from Jess. I closed my eyes as one of the grunts went in for a heavy punch, only the impact didn't come. I opened my eyes to see Jess there, blocking this guy from getting to me. 
She went crazy at them. She was so fiery. It was like she morphed into this magical creature. She made them apologize to her and then to me. Then they sulked off. Now I understood why Jess is leading these crazy boys. After that incident, I thought it would be best to avoid this girl as far as possible if I didn't want to get stuck in trouble. But then some things happened that changed my mind. Once I had just finished an extra night shift at the cafe I work in when I saw an old lady struggling with a pile of groceries in the opposite supermarket. I was about to cross the street to help her when I saw Jess there. She was so focused on her phone that she trampled on the old lady's tomato. This made me mad, and I was about to go and tell her so. Then I saw her take her backpack off and grab all the things on the ground. Was she seriously going to steal off an old lady? But no. Instead, she handed the backpack to the old lady and quickly carried all the remaining plastic bags for her. The old lady looked both shocked and thankful. I felt bad for thinking the worst of Jess. Another time, I saw that she was feeding a wild cat. When she saw me, she quickly stood up and left. Those small, silent actions were far different from her appearance, and I fell in love with this girl. I couldn't stop thinking about her. She literally wouldn't budge from my head. I knew that I needed to come clean to her about my feelings, so I asked her out on a date. The first time, she panicked. She swore a sentence and left, but I dared to ask her again. And this time, she just coldly replied, so let's try. I'm happy like crazy because I know that despite her cold and careless appearance, she's really warm and adorable inside. I told my friends and they massively overreacted. They said they knew she was trouble, as they'd seen her fight, and they told me to go and date Molly instead. When my teacher saw us walking hand in hand in the park, she phoned my parents and told them that I was dating a spoiled, disgusting, and destructive girl, and that she would probably ruin me and drag me down with her. My parents were mad. They longed for me to find a nice Catholic girl, and they thought Jess would corrupt me. I explained that Jess was different, and they eventually agreed to give her a chance. My mother said the whole family would go for a picnic at the park on the weekend and asked me to invite Jess to join us. I was so happy, I honestly believed that when my family saw how great she was, then all their reservations would vanish. Jess surprised me that morning when I arrived to pick her up. It was the first time I'd seen her wearing a dress and makeup. I walked alongside her happily, partly because my girlfriend was too pretty, partly because she was willing to go change herself for me, even though I didn't ask her to do it. Everything went smoothly. My parents' first impression of her seemed very good. That made both me and Jess feel much more comfortable. We were having fun chatting when a bird from nowhere came flying and pooed on Jess's lovely dress. She jumped up in panic immediately. She shook her dress like a rag and threw a bunch of dirty words right in front of my parents who gave her unimpressed glares. She ended up kicking the whole picnic basket that my mom had spent ages preparing over. Food scattered everywhere. Jess looked embarrassed and asked to leave. I frantically followed and took her home. I couldn't help laughing at the situation. It was a bit funny and she was so cute. Then I arrived home and saw my parents' angry looks. They told me to end it with Jess, as she was angry, brash, and rude. I know Jess just panicked. She didn't mean to flip out. It was just an unintended incident. Everything was going fine until that dumb bird messed it all up. Now I don't know what to do. I love Jess and don't want to lose her. How can I persuade my parents to give her another chance? Hi, my name is Irina, and I'm a 27-year-old Romanian from Bucharest. The story I'm going to share with you shows how crazy life can be. From a young age, I had a huge crush on my best friend Chris, who was five years older than me. Our parents grew up together, so that meant we naturally became close friends. I have so many childhood memories of time spent with Chris. My favorite one was from when I was about six years old. For some reason, I was really upset, so Chris took a flashlight and shined it on the wall, then did a shadow puppet story for me using his hands. It's seriously one of the most precious memories I have. Also, whenever any other boy came anywhere near me, Chris would jump in and tell them to go away. It was like I had my own personal bodyguard. I always looked up to him, but the older I got, the more jealous I became any time a girl would go near him. 
That's the moment when I realized I had a major crush on him. We hung out all the time, but I never plucked up the courage to tell him how I felt. When I was 13, my family threw a New Year's party at our house. Chris was there, and the whole night we kept exchanging glances. At some point, I got up to go to the store, and he jumped up and offered to keep me company. On our way to the store, it was like time had stopped. Talking to him felt like the most natural thing in the world, and I just knew in my heart that we belonged together. On our way back to the party, I got the biggest shock of my life. Out of the blue, Chris turned to me and kissed me. I couldn't believe it! Then, he told me he'd always had a crush on me, but the five-year age gap scared him too much, so he had never told me about it. As quickly as I'd got my hopes up, they disappeared. Clearly, that meant we couldn't be together. I was so disappointed. It was as if he'd read my mind because he kissed me again and told me not to worry, and he promised me that if our paths ever crossed again, he'd marry me. That was the last time I saw him. His parents got a divorce, and him and his mom moved away, so we lost contact. But life has to go on, right? Throughout the next years, I had other relationships, and after college, I met someone. We fell in love and got married. It all moved quite fast, and right after our wedding, we moved to Italy. But that's when things went downhill. Back when we were in Romania, we spent a lot of time with our friends and had different schedules, so I'd only see my husband in the evenings. But in Italy, we were together all the time. Suddenly, we had no friends, only each other. And the more time we spent together, the more we realized how little we actually had in common. My husband felt like a stranger to me. We almost never kissed. He came home just to sleep. And I realized we were more like roommates than husband and wife. We started fighting, and I moved into the other room. After a few weeks of this, I couldn't take it anymore. We both realized if we continued, we'd never be happy, and we cared about each other too much to live a life like that. We decided to start filing for a divorce. We were adults and came to the conclusion that we'd be better off as friends. That was the toughest time of my life. But luckily, God has sent down an angel to help me. One day, I was coming home from work when something crazy happened. I received a Facebook friend request and almost dropped my phone when I realized who it was from. It was Chris! I hadn't seen or heard from him in 13 years. What a surprise! Of course, I immediately called him and when he picked up, I almost cried. It felt so good to hear his voice again. We ended up chatting for hours and I told him everything that had happened. You won't believe it, but he said he'd wait for me. After all those years, I was still the love of his life. In the years we'd spent apart, Chris has also had other relationships, but he never got married because he never lost hope that we'd meet again. He told me I was the only one he'd ever want to marry. On my 26th birthday, my divorce was finalized, and Chris was there for me during this whole time. Afterwards, we moved back to our hometown together, and I've never been happier. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine we'd meet again. And we were both worried about what our families would think, but everyone was so happy for us. A few months after we'd moved home, I discovered that my fave artist of all time, Jacob Lee, would be playing a two-day concert in our town. We went to watch him, and it was so much fun. His music was so symbolic of our love story. On the second day, we went to see him again, and it ended up being the best day of my life. The promise that Chris had made 13 years before suddenly became a reality. At some point during the performance, Chris was invited up on stage and started telling everyone our story. Then, I got called up to join him on stage. I was so nervous, but deep in my heart, I knew what was about to happen. And, sure enough, at my favorite artist in the whole world's concert, Chris got down on one knee and proposed to me in front of almost 600 people! Can you believe it? 
Of course, I immediately said yes, and now we're planning our dream wedding. And the best part of it all is that not only do I get to marry my childhood crush, but Jacob Lee is also invited to our wedding. It's like the best thing that ever happened to me. Jacob's song Chariot is going to be our wedding song, and the lyric Promise to Love You All My Life is pretty relevant to our love story, don't you think? One day, I was cycling to class, and I wasn't really paying attention because I was running late. I reached into my backpack to text my friend, telling her to cover for me in case the professor asked where I was. Suddenly, my phone flew out of my hand, and the next moment, there was just darkness all around me. They said it was a miracle I'd survived. The truck had come speeding around the corner and knocked me off my bicycle, sending me flying onto the sidewalk. If I'd cracked my head open, I'd be dead, but I wasn't all that lucky. My spine was so badly damaged, I'd never walk again. I tried to feel grateful to just be alive, but being in a wheelchair was hard. I was completely paralyzed from the waist down, so my parents had to do everything for me. The first time my mom had to bathe me, I just lay there and cried. I was 20 years old, and here I was, like a baby again. It was humiliating, and I could see how much it was affecting my parents. Mom had quit her job to look after me, but she was miserable. One day, I couldn't take it anymore, and begged her to go back to work and hire a professional caregiver to look after me instead. They put an ad online, but it took a few days for anyone to apply. And the only person that applied was a young guy named Jason with no experience. My mom hired him anyway because she said he seemed so enthusiastic about becoming a caregiver. I was so angry. I didn't want some strange guy helping me get dressed and helping me go to the toilet. But then I saw him, and all those thoughts disappeared in an instant. He was so good looking. I couldn't believe it. I could barely look at him without blushing. I knew right away that we'd get on well and that he'd just have to close his eyes whenever I needed to use the toilet. We'd figure it out. At first, he was quite shy. Whenever I asked him about his family or his past, he'd always become quiet and change the subject. It was like he was scared to open up to me. But the more he looked after me, the closer we became. Then one day, we were out in the park, and something happened. He'd packed a picnic for us, and just before we stopped to eat it, he bent down and kissed me on my forehead. It felt like the world came to a standstill. I just wanted to be in that moment forever. After that, it was clear we liked each other a lot. I couldn't tell my mom because I knew she'd be mad at me for falling in love with my caregiver. But it wasn't my fault. I didn't want her to fire him. So we kept it a secret. It was perfect. Every day, her and my dad would leave for work, and I'd get to spend all day with my boyfriend. We went to the park every day and to the movies once a week, and we even started learning Spanish together. But then one day he called in sick. It was completely out of the blue, and it wasn't a good time for my family, because the court case trial was coming up in a few days. My dad was a lawyer and had insisted that we proceed with the trial because he truly believed the man in the truck deserved to be punished for almost killing me. I really wanted to put it all behind us and move on, but I knew there was no arguing with my dad. 
Jason was still sick the day of the trial, and I kept texting him, asking him to be there for me, but he said he couldn't get out of bed. I wanted to take him some soup or something, but he wouldn't even tell me his address. In the end, I had no choice but to go to court without him and hope it would all be over quickly. As soon as the truck driver appeared, I could feel how angry my parents were. He looked like the kind of guy who didn't care about what he had done to me. And as soon as he pleaded not guilty to the judge, my dad jumped up and started shouting. I was so embarrassed, and the judge called for a break before it was my turn to stand up and testify. I wheeled myself out of there in tears. All I wanted to do was see Jason, and little did I know, that wish was about to come true. I went outside to get some air, and I was pushing myself so fast I almost bumped into someone. When I looked up, I realized it was Jason. I was so happy to see him, I almost cried. But he did not look happy to see me. In fact, he was turning bright red. I thought you were sick, I asked him, and before he could answer, a woman appeared from behind me and said, Jason, your dad needs you in there. Come on, son. I didn't understand. I asked Jason what was going on, and the woman looked at me and said, How do you know my son? Then she walked back inside. Jason looked at me and said sorry, and then he told me why he was really there. His dad was the truck driver who'd almost killed me. When he'd found out, he told his dad to come clean and admit his fault, but his dad wouldn't. Jason had felt so guilty about it that he applied for a job as a caregiver, but he hadn't realized I was the girl his dad had run over until a few days ago. When the letter had come through for the trial, he'd seen my name and almost vomited in shock. I sat there completely shaking. How could he have kept this from me? This couldn't be happening. The love of my life was the son of the man who put me in a wheelchair. I had about 10 minutes before I had to go back in there and tell the truth. I knew it would hurt Jason to see his dad go to jail. But what choice did I have? I told the truth, and now we're waiting to see what his sentence will be. I love Jason, but I don't know what our future will look like. My parents can't accept that we're together, and nor can his. I can't help but think, though, that if I hadn't been in the accident, I'd never have even met Jason. I guess at least there's one silver lining in all of this. Hi, Melanie here, and I am hanging on the edge of my seat to hear the results of this year's science fair. I know I might not look like a typical studious girl, but I'm definitely serious about school. Ooh, one second. The winner of West High Science Fair 2023 is Harry Silver. That means the runner-up is Melanie D'Angelo. Congratulations to you both. Please come onto the stage for your awards. Man, I can't believe I'm second to him again. We've been literally swapping first and second place on every leaderboard since we were kids. Ugh, so unfair. Look at him. All he did was partying and pulling silly pranks, yet he's still on the honor roll, while I had to study day and night to maintain my straight A's. Mmm, mom's taking quite long. What's that commotion over there? This calls for a celebration. What do you guys think? Olive Garden? Yes! Jeez, can you keep it down just a smidge? Come to think of it, people like Harry just have it all, while I only have mom by my side. Oh, she came just in time! Dad left us for another woman a while ago, so my mom had been struggling every day being a single mom. She must be really sad and lonely, so I'd never mention Dad anymore. Poor her. The more I felt for mom, the angrier I was at dad. Only my bestie, Izzy, knew about this, cause, you know, it's hard to open up when you're from a broken home. Luckily, there's one thing in this world that could raise my spirits, as well as my heartbeat, in these dark, gloomy days. My dreamy crush, Cameron. Last year of middle school was coming to an end, so I gotta make a move with Cameron fast. The problem was, every time I got close to him, that party pooper appeared out of nowhere to make fun of me. He kept calling me melanin, cause that's what you lack, and bothered me nonstop. We had never gotten along, but seriously? What's wrong with him lately? He picked on me way too much, and why only me? I can't believe everyone thinks he's a model student. To me, Harry's no more than the most annoying bug. All right, hair, makeup, pearly white teeth, check. 
I'm giving it another go today, waiting for Cameron at his locker with my love letter in hand. As soon as I saw his gorgeous face, I took a deep breath, then put up the sweetest smile, but all of a sudden, someone messed up my hair from behind. Ouch! I turned around to see the culprit. Harry! You look hot. And it generates electricity, too. Now you can charge your phone with your hair. Thank me later. <laughs> oh my god! Nobody should see this Medusa hairdo! My plan to confess failed again before it even started. All thanks to that clown Harry. Wait, isn't that my dad? He was walking out of the principal's office with a much younger woman and a boy my age. From what I gathered, they're saying that his son would go here. Seeing how my dad's starting a new life with his new family, I couldn't help but feel sorry for mom. This is all that woman's fault. If she just disappeared, things could go back to the way they were. But that's merely a wish, and me and mom just have to put up with this boring, unhappy life day by day. Voodoo for dummies? Was some higher power listening to me? This sounds like an answer to my problem. I ordered the book immediately. I started studying all kinds of spells and rituals in it as soon as the package arrived. Voodoo dolls? Interesting. The next day, I went to find Izzy ASAP. Hey, I'm thinking of using a voodoo doll on my dad's new wife to bring my parents back together. What do you think? Does it really work? I don't think... Yo, Wednesday. Sorry. <clears throat> Yo, knock off Wednesday. <laughs> Harry Silver, you are so dead. But wait a second. You know what? We can test it out. Harry would be the perfect guinea pig. What? Him? He's just being his playful self. What if voodoo actually works? Harry doesn't deserve it. Well, I don't think so. Let's make a doll for our little preppy boy then. Crocheting a doll's easy, however the tricky thing was getting my subject's hair, and you bet I won't get physically close to Harry even if someone pays me to. So I got this, a Ouija board. It will help me figure out the code for his locker. There must be a few strands stuck on the fancy hairbrush that he kept inside. Ugh, but none of the combos worked! This is the tenth time already! How about this? There we go! But there were only books inside. Ah, uh, boring! Then the soccer team's changing room it is. I will definitely find something on his uniform. Let's see. Harry, silver, there it is. Aha, gotcha. I was about to flee the scene when I suddenly saw a boy with only a towel around his waist. Ah! I sprinted to the door and dashed straight through the hallway. That was close. Okay, I still had a voodoo doll to finish. And it's done. I excitedly show Izzy last night's work. Pretty good, huh? It has Harry's hair too. What? How do you know it's really Harry's? What if it's somebody else's? Well, I... Hey, did you hear some perv with panda eyes was creeping around the boy's changing room yesterday? Go away. But don't worry, starting today we'll take turns guarding the entrance to catch them. Oh, what a coincidence. You fit the culprit's description perfectly, melanin. But you're definitely not that pervy, are you? <laughs> I was so mad, I felt smoke coming out of my ears. I wish my gaze could kill that rat. Mel, you're squeezing the doll's arm. It's gonna come off. Whoops, my bad. Next time I saw Harry, he had bandages all over his right arm. Hang on, did I do that? Feeling guilty and curious, I approached him. Hey, what's wrong with your arm? It's been in pain since yesterday for no reason. My doctor said nothing's wrong, but I kept feeling like someone's squeezing it really hard. Ugh, there it goes again. Oh, spooky. It means the doll is truly magical. I immediately came running to tell Izzy, and of course, she was shocked too. But hold up, nosy, arty? How long has he been standing here? This guy clearly had heard everything. He kept reaching for my doll. No way. He'd tell the whole school about it. Then suddenly, Harry sat down next to me. Melanie, my arm hurts. Feed me. Ah. Uh... What's he pulling now? Can't he see I'm in the middle of something? Right at that moment, Artie snatched my doll. Leave it to me. No, Artie, no! Not with milk in his mouth! Oops, sorry, I felt so nauseous all of a sudden. That was more than enough to make all of us firm believers. But maybe I should stop. I do feel guilty for dragging Harry into this. That afternoon, when I was about to throw the doll in the trash can, I saw Cameron walk towards me. Did Christmas come early? Hey, I was wondering if you're... Yes, I've been waiting so long for this day! An occultist? 
What? I mean, Artie was going off about a voodoo doll of yours, so I thought you might know a thing or two about love spells. But if that's not true, I'm sorry. Um, what do you need a love spell for? Then he revealed he wanted to put a spell on his crush, Regina. So all this time, I had no chance with him at all? But hey, a love spell sounds like a brilliant idea. It could ensure my parents' reunion too. Sure thing, but I'll need your hair as well as Regina's. Also, some of your personal items for the spell to work. Obviously, I'll use his stuff, but in a love spell for me. And you know what I gave him? It's all junk with some of my poodle's fur. <laughs> a few days later, I found a gift box in my locker from Cameron. My spell worked. I'm about to have a boyfriend and reunite my family. But before I could carry out that long-awaited plan, Artie came to me with a difficult request, making a voodoo doll of Brad, some transfer student who already established himself as a vicious tough guy. That sounds dangerous, and I already promised myself not to use voodoo anymore. Don't believe me? See for yourself. Then, I followed him and witnessed another student being picked on by a much bigger guy. Hey, isn't he dad's stepson? Okay, this Brad guy deserves it, so I agreed to help Artie. The next day, I approached Brad after class where he usually messed with other students. I managed to sneak up behind him and get one strand of hair. Oh no, busted! I quickly put the hair in the doll. This better work! Come on! Why isn't it working? And why now? Pesky little thing. Stop! Stop. I know those voices. Thank goodness! Touch her and you'll regret it. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call the police! Brad just scoffed and left. Phew! What are you both doing here? And Harry, I thought your arm hurt. Then Harry and Izzy finally told me that voodoo had never been effective. Izzy knew that Harry only picked on me because he liked me? That's why she tried to stop me from using voodoo on him. But she couldn't, so she then told Harry everything. To be honest, I found your attempts quite amusing, so I acted like they were successful to humor you and myself. I was gonna stop though, but when you were being sweet to me and ask about my arm, I decided to keep it up. Oh. My. God. My bestie had been friends with my mortal enemy all along. Behind my back? Am I a joke to you? Why are you here? To make fun of me even more than you already did? Because I got worried when I heard you're going after Brad. Melanie, you're the smartest girl in school. I don't understand why you're doing all these dumb gimmicks. Yeah, you've been acting strange lately. Since when are you superstitious? What other choice do I have? Voodoo or at whatever cost? I need to get my parents back together and that punk Brad is my dad's stepson. He deserves whatever comes to him for ruining my life. And you know what else? Both of you get out of my sight for good! Then I stormed off. After that day, I no longer talked to Izzy, and Harry's relentless pestering finally stopped. But honestly, it felt a bit empty without them, especially with the upcoming school field trip. Of course, I'm still coming. Who needs them anyway? This is the chance for Cameron and I to be closer now that we're talking on the regs. It's gonna be the best trip ever. I've never been the outdoorsy type, but does camping involve this many physical tasks? Almost done. What on earth is that? Isn't he under my love spell already? I mean, he even gave me a present. I was still in shock when Cameron came over to help with the tent. Thank you. No need to. I can't thank you enough. That spell of yours worked wonders. What does he mean by that? Then, out of nowhere, Izzy tapped on my shoulder. I've tried to tell you. Those two have been flirting for a while now. I guess Cameron just needed your spell as a little spiritual push. That means none of these has ever worked? There's absolutely no hope of bringing my family back? Feeling devastated, I burst into tears and ran off. I was running without looking and bumped into... Brad? Melanie, right? Just who I want to see. Or should I say, my dear stepsister, your mama sent you here. Let's go of me and piss off! <laughs> I wonder how pathetic she had to be to have her husband walk out on her. <laughs> if this was any other time, I would have fought back. But after all that just happened, I've lost all of my will to do anything now. Out of the blue, I saw someone charge at Brad and land a brutal blow on his face. I said I'd make you regret touching her. I had to stop Harry before he messed Brad's face up beyond recognition. It's time we got out of here. Why did you come help me after everything I said? I'm kinda used to your coldness. Besides, my love language is following you around and teasing you until you notice or get mad at me. Silly. I know. On a different note, I thought you knew that voodoo was useless. Yeah, so I thought of a love spell to get my parents back together. Then my family will be whole and happy again. But I know it now. There's no such thing as magic. 
Why not? Magic is alive and well inside you, and it is called forgiving. It cannot punish those who hurt you and your loved ones, but it can help you let go of your pains and sufferings. What are you trying to say? I mean, no magic can make your dad come back, but someday the pain he caused you won't ache anymore. Eventually, your mom and you will heal and lead a fulfilling life without him. I never took this goofy guy for the philosophical and mature type, but I guess he's right. I've been so caught up in my own bitterness that I didn't realize moving on was an option. When my mom picked me up, I decided to finally ask her about my dad. Unexpectedly, mom told me that of course it was sad at first, but she's actually doing fine these days. Life's supposed to have its ups and downs. As long as we welcome them with open arms, everything will turn out all right in the end. After all, your father will have the life he wants while we get on with our lives. Turned out, I was the only one chasing the past all this time when what I actually needed was closure. Mom's words were more than enough to put this grieving period behind me. My last year as a middle schooler was quite eventful. Brad was no longer a problem since he got a taste of Harry's fist. Did I mention that we became a trio of best friends? For now, at least. Harry never stopped his shenanigans, but instead of getting annoyed like before, I found him quite adorable and endearing. Oh, just kiss already? Izzy! I dashed along the hallway, then skidded to a halt in front of the classroom door. Ah, uh, I was late. Again. Miss Anderson, what's your excuse today? Warning, sir. I'm sorry, but my spaniel hit my shoes, then I tripped over a package by my front door, then my heap of a junk car wouldn't start, and that's enough. Good God. Please sit down. Ashley already took attendance. What? So much for my perfectly crafted excuse. Mr. O'Shaughnessy totally would have let it slide, but she had to ruin it. I'm Ashley. I'm pretty, I'm perfect, everybody likes me. Well, no one likes teacher's pets, Ashley. Think I'm being too harsh on her? <laughs> Just ask anyone about Ashley Mae Anderson. Ashley's father's a vet with a Medal of Valor. They even had dinner with the president at the White House. For her sweet 16, she rented out the swankiest club downtown for an entire weekend. And David Guetta DJ'd. Ashley dated two college boys at the same time, and when they found out, things got physical. Okay, okay, maybe not all of that was true, but who cares? Look, the main character here is me. Hi, my name's Ashley Mae Anderson. I know, what a freaky coincidence, right? But that's the only thing we had in common. Because unlike popular Ashley, I'm just a normal teen who's just minding her own business. But then she transferred here and messed up everything. This happens every time I open my locker. And they're not addressed to me, but to Ashley. Jeez, why do boys go so cuckoo bananas over that pretentious princess? I gathered that whole cluster and dumped them on Ashley's desk. Here's your delivery for the day. Oh, I have no use for those things. You can keep them if you want. How snobby. I know those rumors weren't all lies. Alright, if you said so. Being mistaken for Ashley was so annoying that I did consider putting a sign on my locker or something. But I suppose sometimes it actually had its perks. Like when I accidentally knocked over a trash can in the school's parking lot. But upon knowing my name, the janitor said my father was his commanding officer back in the day and let me off. And believe it or not, these mix-ups didn't only happen at school. Once, my family went out for dinner and the staff at this restaurant thought we were the other Andersons. They must be some really important people cause the super attentive waiters topped up our drinks for free and gave us complimentary desserts. Pretty sweet, right? Only when we were leaving, things almost went south when the manager shook my dad's hand and said, Thank you for your service. My dad seemed confused, but fortunately, I dragged him away before they busted us. I mean, Ashley's been enjoying these privileges her entire life, so it's fair I benefit a little from them. Especially since I have to endure being called her Walmart version. Anyway, back to me. I arrived home to find a teary-eyed girl sitting on her front porch. She must be one of Billy's exes. If your brother's a jock that all girls flock around, you'd get used to this real soon. He went through girlfriends quicker than hair gel, and he always had some peeves about them, like Mandy, too clingy, Katie, too dramatic, Maggie, too flirty. The list goes on. 
then, as soon as my backpack hit the bedroom floor, my door burst open. Hey, I need your help. What? Need a hand to make up with cry Barbie out there? She's ancient history. Check this out. Her name's Jane Brown. Ain't she a beaut? I immediately recognized her. She's the waitress that he kept eyeing the other day. Now, he needed my help to ask her out and not seem creepy. So, I suggested taking her to his friend Alexander's party this weekend. How do you know about that? Isn't that cool people exclusive? As if I wanted to. I was added to their group chat by accident because they thought I was Ashley. <laughs> right. Hot Ashley. You should come too. I'll be with Jane, but Victor will be there. Wait, I'll see my crush at that stupid party? Sign me up then! Jocks, cheerleaders, stuck-up kids. This place was packed with people like Billy. My brother briefly introduced me to the host Alexander, while Madison followed him around looking all shy and gooey-eyed. Wasn't she bothered that all Alexander seemed to care about was if anyone had seen Ashley? I also got to officially meet Jane, but the person I was looking for was Victor. He's so much more than just a cute face in the crowd. He's the peanut butter to my jelly. But before I could talk to him, a bunch of dudes popped out of nowhere. This is Ashley? Oh man, I thought she was supposed to be pretty. No offense though. She's a six if you squint hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm squinting now and you're barely even a two yourself. No offense though. What, what did, did you, you say? say? <laughs> Don't worry, you could still go after pretty girls. They just need a crate of fear first. The crowd suddenly felt silent and stared at us. This party is so lame. Peace out, losers. Anywhere is better than that stuffy elitist hellhole, but it's a bummer I didn't get to talk to Victor. He's Billy's best bro and used to come hang out at our place pretty much every day, but not anymore. Guess has been avoiding me ever since I told him I had feelings for him. <sighs> I was going to settle things with him tonight, but those jerks ruined it. Do I need to print my own t-shirt saying, I'm Ashley, you must be looking for Ashley? The next day, while looking for Victor, I heard someone calling my name, but I turned around only to see Alexander calling for, ugh, Ashley. So annoying. I saw him make a move on her, but she said guys like him bored her, then proceeded to list all his flaws. Oof, harsh. From then on, I tried my best to avoid Ashley, and thought my life would be light and breezy. But nope. On the contrary, I found myself in a series of unfortunate events. One day, a stack of religious magazines randomly showed up on our doorstep. But the real kicker was, they were all addressed specifically to me! And there was absolutely no way to convince my family and neighbors that I wasn't a member of the Church of Scientology. Two days later, all of my clean clothes had some weird stains and holes on them. I had to beg Billy to lend me some of his. That day, I went to school in an old jersey, looking like a midget. <sighs> Then, this Monday, I became the center of attention by showing up with my face covered in pimple patches and band-aids. Well, that's because I woke up to countless cystic acne and didn't have enough patches. This resulted in me being called the mummy for five days straight. But the final straw was my car having two flat tires. The clock was ticking, so I asked Billy to take me to school. However, he just flat out refused, saying he'd already promised to pick Jane up. No other choice, I had to ride my old bike. When I saw Billy's car in the driveway, my pettiness got the better of me, so I splashed my half-empty milk carton over the windshield. I'm on my way. Oh my god, you little brat! Sorry babe, you won't believe what my sister just did. Seeing Billy's reaction was chef's kiss. <laughs> you got it coming, big bro. The next day, my car was fixed, so I managed to get to school early. Looks like my string of bad luck was finally over. Okay, let's see who wants to confess to Queen Ashley today. From... Victor? Oh no, why him? I stood there, frozen with a letter in my hand, still processing the situation when a friend came and showed me something on her phone. It's a video of me singing and dancing in my room. No one's supposed to see this, ever. It had been uploaded by some throwaway account, but who else could it be but Jesus Christ, Billy. I rushed home to see Billy and Jane cuddling in the living room. How's he still so calm after pulling that on me? I confronted him and he didn't even bother denying it and even said that's what I deserved for vandalizing his car. 
We screamed and shouted at each other, but before we ended up in a fistfight, he stopped and stumped off to his room. I was still fuming, glaring at his shadow, and I saw Jane gawping at me in delight. Don't blame your poor brother too much, dear. It was I who pulled the strings. What? Jane? But why? We'd barely even interacted. Then she went on about all of my mishaps lately were her doings. Yep, my so-called bad luck, it had been Jane all along. That's for stealing Alexander from my sister. He's her first love. Do you know how heartbroken Zoe has been? Wait, Zoe who? And why on earth would I choose to mingle with that playboy Alex? Kudos to this girl for thinking I could ever steal someone's boyfriend. Hello, I'm still struggling with my lifelong crush over here. I tried to tell her she made a mistake, but she wouldn't listen. Stop denying it. I know it's you. You're East High's Ashley with a vet dad. That checked all the boxes already. Hold up. There's another Ashley Mae Anderson in our school. She's Ashley with EY. I'm Ashley, E-I-G-H. Her dad is a war veteran. My father is a veterinarian. Oh, snap. Good lord. She devised this intricate plan, approached Billy just to make it work, and was successful for the most part. Well, apart from having the wrong person. Just amazing. Jane apologized and promised to take down the video. However, she wanted me to help her take revenge on Ashley in return. I didn't want to get involved, but I also never wanted to be on her bad side again, so I reluctantly agreed. But if you think about it, Jane's story didn't quite add up. Ashley seemed to have a holier-than-thou attitude and had dozens of admirers waiting in line. Why would she get in between them? Not to mention, Alexander's a notorious player who Ashley already ruthlessly rejected. I believe there's more to this. As expected, thanks to that video, my school life was now even more awkward than usual. But it didn't matter, as I was too preoccupied with Operation Ashley. Today's mission, approach her after cheerleading practice. I stood in the corner, behind the bleacher, waiting for my chance. But before I showed myself, I saw Madison march over, say something to Ashley, then storm off. After that, Ashley started… sobbing? I didn't know what happened, but I felt bad for her. So I tried comforting her, but she kept brushing me off. Look, you can keep the Ice Queen act all you want, but I know you have feelings too. I thought you might have something else you want to share with me, not just the name. And it was like I pulled a lever that let out all of her bottled up emotions, and we had a heart to heart all afternoon. Just as I thought, things weren't what they seemed. We'd better talk this through with one another. So I set up a meeting at a cafe in the South Coast Plaza, as they wouldn't dare to cause a scene in public, right? Anyway, Ashley clarified that Alexander and her weren't a thing, while assuring Zoe that she deserved a guy much better than him. But Alex was really sweet to me. He gave me this present on our one month anniversary. Did he say it's his grandmother's? Yeah, he tried giving me an identical one on my birthday. I'd say you dodged a bullet when you two broke up. Please, look at yourself first. You two flirt with boys left and right and still act all high and mighty. Get off that high horse. Ashley seemed genuinely hurt by Jane's words that it took her a while to speak up. I'm just sick and tired of being the popular girl who has to live up to everyone's expectations. It's too exhausting. I thought transferring here would mean a fresh start, but everyone still has this impression of me which I can't seem to change. The rest of us looked at each other in confusion when we saw how sad Ashley's situation actually was. We didn't know there were so many downsides to being high school popular. Ashley, you know you can just be yourself, right? The world will have to accept you for who you truly are. If people don't like you, then so be it. Yeah, if they don't, that's their problem, not yours. You can't fit into a mold to please everyone, because there's no such thing. I don't want to agree with her, but she has a point. Let the whole world know the real Ashley, and you too, Zoe. Someday, you'll find a good guy who loves you for yourself. Alright girls, that's settled. Now, I have to deal with my own mess. Billy found out the truth and now he's been ghosting me. But I swear to God, I'm in love with this guy. Gotta go. Bye! I couldn't believe I was rooting for my saboteur and her accomplice to be together. But here I was. Go get him, tiger! 
The next Monday, Ashley walked to class and had lunch with me instead of Madison and her clique. And of course, this didn't go unnoticed. You left us for her? What is she? You're not hot, sister? <laughs> Before I could clap back, Ashley stood up and unleashed her inner sass. This is me living my life as my true self. If any of you bootlickers have something to say about that, you can shove it where the sun won't shine. Sweet Mary Jesus and Holy Spirits! Who knew she had it in her? Her words completely decimated those hyenas. And suddenly, someone grabbed my wrist. Victor? Slow down! Where are you taking me? Besides, you got the wrong person, and also the wrong address for this. You should give it to her yourself. Actually, I sent it to the right girl, but apparently, she still hasn't opened it. Wait... What? And you're right, I should tell her myself. It's just that Billy and I made a deal that sisters are off limits, so I thought it's better to avoid you. But hearing Ashley talk about being herself made me realize that I'm sick of hiding my feelings. I'm gonna make Billy see how sincere I am for you. Before I do that, Ashley, I like you. And, um, will you go on a date with me? Yes! Um, I mean, yeah, I suppose that would be cool. This is beyond my wildest dream! Not only do I have a brand new friend, but also a date with my dream guy! Fortune is finally smiling on me. <laughs> the bell had already rung, but here I was, still stuck in chemistry class. Mr. Evans won't stop droning on about the big test coming up. Abigail, Abigail, you do know what a bond is, right? That's easy. My dad goes on about them all the time. U.S. treasuries, Japan bonds... They are financial bonds. We're talking about chemical bonds for Christ's sake. Close enough. Don't you think I deserve a grade increase? Enough! Go and meet your homeroom now. This is unacceptable. Jeez, his bad mood must have been contagious for adults, as Miss Garcia was also in a foul mood. So, Abigail, I will organize a meeting with your dad. My dad? No, no, he'll go mad and take away my credit card. This seriously cannot go on anymore. Your grades are on a downward spiral. I promise, I'll actually study this time. Please, let me prove it by acing my next test. Your next test? Let's see. That appears to be your chemistry final in two weeks' time. That's perfect! I need time to process all the knowledge I've been learning anyway. And, phew, crisis averted. Now, where is Norma? I need some retail therapy with my bestie. Hmm, so I have two weeks to work this out. I mean, you can probably cram in quite a bit within that time. No, Norma! I have to figure out what I need to buy before my dad locks the card! Right then, a nearby waiter suddenly tripped and spilled orange juice onto... Norma and her newly brought Chanel bag! Oh no! But to my surprise, she just smiled and dismissed the waiter. What was that, Norma? What's got into you? Love, I guess? It's still early days, but I'm in love, Abby. <sighs> Isn't the world so dreamy and beautiful? Hmm, you are... Kinda happy? Hold up, Mrs. Garcia is single. If I found someone special, then she'd be too distracted to call in my dad for the meeting. Yeah, I guess. Or, you know, you could actually study. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Evans is single too. Two bird, one stone. <laughs> so the next morning, I joined Mr. Evans' chemistry club to spy on him. Wanna hear a joke? What do you think zero says to eight? Nice bell. <laughs> Hey girl, can I be the photon to your electron and take you to an excited state? Please, somebody save me already! Yo, Callum, you're late to the party. We're having a blast over here. Are you coming home with me or Mrs. Garcia today? Miss Garcia? Hi, Hank. My mom's staying late at school today, so... This Callum guy is Miss Garcia's son? I sure came to the right place. Mr. Evans then gave some boring lecture about states of matter. After drawing a whole maze of weird symbols and stuff on the board, he asked if anyone had any questions. Here comes my chance. Oh, good. Curiosity is the gateway to knowledge. Go ahead, Abigail. I was wondering if you like tea or coffee? Oh, and also, are you more of a dog or cat person? Can you please pay attention to the lesson? Callum, as a top student, I think you can help her. Of course you will, Mr. Evans. Poor guy, he's totally oblivious that he's been chosen for my master plan. Who made him Miss Garcia's son in the first place? 
So, Callum, right? You know, your mom's actually my homeroom teacher. Yeah, I got that figured out long ago. Wait, what? You already knew about me? How can I not? The lowest scoring student in every class? You're my mom's favorite dinner topic. That's why I'm here, studying to change your mom's dinner topic. Could you help me with that? Nope. I don't know what you're up to, but keep me out of it. No way I was letting this plan fail. So I decided to follow Callum to the library after school to learn more about Miss Garcia. Oops, what a coincidence. Didn't expect you to be here. Thought you'd be studying with your mom 24 seven. We're just normal people who do other things apart from studying. You know, reading, watching movies, talking. I guess you and your mom only read specialized books. <laughs> Quite the opposite, actually. We both enjoy Victor Hugo. What about you? Since when were you suddenly interested in chemistry? M me? Why, why not? I've always had the biggest passion for chemistry. The way all the substances interact with each other is mind-blowing. Chemical bonds, you know? If you're that interested, then yeah, I'll make you a master of chemistry. But first, you may want to try reading your book the correct way. Did he just say he'd help me with chemistry? Hmm, why does my gut instinct tell me trouble is on the way? I came home with Callan's precious piece of information about his mom and forged the cheesiest love letter, well, on behalf of Mr. Evans, of course, and made sure to hand deliver it. Who knew someone as strict as Miss Garcia had a soft spot for Victor Hugo romance novels? <laughs> From my hiding spot, I saw Callum open the door and get the letter. Okay, first bird down. The next morning, I was excited to peek into the teacher's room to check on Miss Garcia. But why is the principal here? And in his hand is... The love letter! Ye who suffer because ye love, love yet more. To die of love is to live in it. From David. David Evans? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Brois, that's actually my, uh, literature assignment. Wrong address. <laughs> How in the caramel fudge did this letter end up here? Callum obviously got the letter. I decided to sneak the letter directly into Miss Garcia's bag afterward. Better safe than sorry. In the following days, I needed to send Mr. Evans the other love letter too. Only, Callum was a little too determined to turn me into a chemistry master. He made sure I got the notes imprinted in my brain, questioned me on the topics like an FBI agent interrogating a hard case, and even had his eyes fixed on me every time I carried out the experiments. I got no time left for my plan. You know what I've come to find out? You're actually not that bad at studying, just need some more attention. As if I care! When will he leave me alone so I can take the other bird down? Right then, Mr. Evans suddenly called Callum to the discussion room next door. Gotta go. You can finish the oxidation. Remember to measure carefully and not take your eyes off of it for a second. Don't sweat it. I've got this. As soon as he left, I sneaked into Mr. Evans' room and put the letter in his bag. But when I was about to leave, something caught my eye. A picture of young Mr. Evans. Yikes, did too much studying and no loving make his hair leave him for good? Hmm, he has a lot of books in here. Some of them are by... Victor Hugo! Ha! Huh. Seems Mr. Evan and Miss Garcia are made for each other. Oh, sugar, the experiment! I ran back to the lab and poured all the substances in, but it was weird. What did I tell you? All the time spent on this experiment, just to see a burn. Oh, wait, what is this purplish substance? Moav! We've accidentally created Moav instead! You're so brilliant, Abby! Didn't really know what was going on, but are those my cheeks I can feel blushing? What's gotten into me? Didn't know you two are progressing that fast. Maybe keep it down a notch in public. Seeing Hank made us both turn cherry red and jolt apart. It was just a joke, but somehow my heart was flipping. After the incident, Callum didn't seem so annoyed with me anymore. Instead, he was kind of caring. He would patiently explain things I didn't understand and clean up after our experiments. Talk about having great chemistry together. Literally. The two-week mark soon arrived, but strangely, all the questions were not hard at all. I know all of the answers. They're all on topics I covered with Callum. Later that day, I was walking when Callum zoomed over to me. Mr. Evans said you passed the test. I knew you could do it. Abby, if you'd like, do you want to go out for a movie? Abby, Abby, shocking news! I just saw Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia holding hands in the school garden. Things are progressing! Norma and I both turned into excited dolphins when Callum's happy expression fell. What are you talking about? My mom with whom? Mr. Evans, you should thank Abby. It was her plan to get your mom a new boyfriend. The plan? Is that what you call it? Passion for chemistry? So what? It worked, didn't it? This isn't gonna happen. No way! 
What's your problem? Why don't you want your mom to be happy? Talk about selfish. Callum couldn't answer and huffed off. He's been ignoring me ever since. And me? I decided to find a new lab partner. Well, if Hank would quit getting in the way, why did he always poke his nose in? I gave Hank a dirty look, but he just pushed Callum toward me. You two are welcome. Ugh, what gives? Callum couldn't even meet my eye. I felt kind of bad for Callum. I guess no one wants to see their parent dating their chemistry teacher, right? Why bother anyway? I should be happy because the plan has worked out. What's up with Callum? Why is he acting as if someone burglarized his house or something? Actually, Callum's dad walked out on them a couple of years back. Since then, he swore to never let anyone hurt his mom again. That's why he's so against your matchmaking plan. That explains a lot. But wait, how did you know about the matchmaking plan? Pink started to sweat bullets while Norma constantly winked at him. Hey, are you guys hiding something from me? Don't tell me. No, no, we're not dating. We, we're... You said it yourself, idiot. Hmm, that makes sense. The next morning, Miss Garcia suddenly got sick, and this Miss Flowers came in to cover. Different from our strict homeroom, Miss Flowers didn't teach much and seems pretty chill with whatever we do in class. Great, huh? Yeah, it would be if she didn't keep on flirting with Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans didn't look comfortable with Miss Flowers at all. She was obviously trying so hard to win him over. Poor Miss Garcia. She looked so happy with Mr. Evans before. My master plan can't have been for nothing. I gotta do something. So I handcrafted a reminder love letter on behalf of Miss Garcia again. That was sure to make Mr. Evans' heart give off butterfly flutters. But I was sneaking it onto his desk when Miss Flowers appeared. Abigail? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Mr. Evans is my dream man, not hers. No, he's not. He and Miss Garcia are obviously made for each other. Duh! I demand that you take that back at once. He's my heart's desire. Mine. No, he's not. He goes all gooey-eyed at Miss Garcia, not you. This is unacceptable. Detention! That's not fair, Miss Flowers. You can't punish her over nothing. You. Garcia's son, right? Wanna play Hero Saves Beauty? Detention for both of you, now! Miss Flowers? More like Miss Tyrant. What kind of a teacher made students clean the windows for detention? Ugh, these stupid windows, breaking my back already. And Callum being all frosty the snowman with me is not helping. You brought all of this on yourself. What? If you hadn't have given the love letter to the principal in the first place, Mr. Evans and your mom would be official already. My mom and I are fine by ourselves. Who's being stubborn now? Hank already told me everything. I understand you're upset, but have you ever thought about what your mom wants? She sure looked happy with Mr. Evans. Callum didn't say anything, but I could tell from his glazed eyes that he was thinking hard about this. When Callum and I finally got out of detention, Hank and Norma rushed in. We just heard that Miss Garcia has food poisoning. She's fine now, but Miss Flowers will probably cover for another week. Why do I feel like Miss Flowers has something to do with this? She visited my mom yesterday and gave her a casserole. That's it! Miss Flowers must have poisoned Miss Garcia so she could replace her! But this is getting crazy. Hmm, what can we do? How about we publicize all the love letters online so the whole school knows about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans? I mean, if that's okay with you? Callum didn't say anything and just nodded. We immediately rushed to the IT room, but the computer's locked. Let me handle it. I know the password. With Callum's help, we posted on the school forum. And guess what? Everyone's smitten with Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans' love story. Cute, huh? We then left to visit Miss Garcia, but Miss Flowers appeared in front of us. What do you all think you're doing? Making a fuss on the school forum? I bravely stepped up to face her. You've seen it. Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia belong together. You should just give up on him already. Is that so? You know what? Mr. Evans actually wanted me to meet him for a private talk tonight. And as for your homeroom teacher, guess what? That position will be mine full time. <laughs> I'm afraid you've got it all mixed up, Miss Flowers. It's Mr. Evans, followed by Miss Garcia. We ask you to come to talk about Miss Garcia's food poisoning. That's right. Earlier today, you visited me, asking me if I was ready to come back to class tomorrow. You were very kind and even brought me homemade food. Little did I know that this was a deliberate attempt for you to make me sick. Luckily, Mr. Evans dropped by just in time to get me to the ER. And now you're talking about taking my place? No way! But but the students clearly love me more anyway! They hate you because you always make them study! Just then, everyone started booing her. Miss Garcia is strict, but at least she's serious with teaching and always makes sure we study. You don't teach us anything. That's right! And we all know about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans already. 
You're just being a third wheel. No! No, no! This can't be true! David, tell these kids that our love is as bright as the sun, and, and that we're soulmates! I know you love me! Tell them! David, tell them you love me! Tell them! Unfortunately, my heart has always belonged to Miss Garcia. I was nervous about sharing my feelings with her, but fate brought us together, and now I couldn't be happier. Miss Flower's whole expression wilted. Ha! She burst into hysterical tears and ran off. Mom, are you okay? I'm sorry I wasn't there. I'm fine, Callum. Please don't worry. Um, thanks for looking out for my mom. Please, can you take her home for me? Mr. Evans nodded, then took Miss Garcia away. When there were only four of us, actually two of us left, Callum turned to me. You were right. It was so silly of me trying to stop people from falling in love. Because when you fall for someone, you can't help it. What do you mean? I mean, I think I've fallen for you. at a press conference standing in front of countless reporters. Oh, no, no, that's not me. There you go. I'm Alexia, 17 years old. I may look like a high schooler, but unlike kids my age, I'm a bodyguard. How so? Well, I was adopted by an underground security organization after being abandoned at a young age. Thankfully, Papa, my savior, was around to teach me everything from math to martial arts. Honestly, it was the happiest time of my life but he'd gone too soon due to cancer, and it's like I was abandoned again. Didn't leave me any time to grieve, the organization put me on training from dusk till dawn, saying I needed to make my papa proud. So I always tried my best and stayed on top at martial arts. However, due to my clumsiness, I ended up as just a bodyguard for VIPs with a codename 036. How boring. <sighs> Until one day, I was summoned by the boss. 036, we have a special task for you. His name is David Smith, principal of Woodford High School. Another doll escort, again. Ugh. You will investigate Mr. Smith for a financial regulation violation by disguising as a new student at Woodford and collect everything related to him, his wife, and daughter. So be extremely careful, is that clear? Yes, sir. Finally, goodbye boring bodyguard job. Time to prove myself. I'll make Papa proud. And to be honest, I'm also excited to experience the life of a high schooler. Now, I needed to do some shopping. Since I only have suits to wear on duty, I didn't know how to dress like a real student. Oh, wow. Look at all these dazzling clothes. After a lot of contemplating, I decided to take this pretty dress. This thing, and also these. They're matching, right? But the saleswoman asked me if they were for my little sister. Huh? What did she mean? Then she picked out something else for me. I was about to try it on when a scream startled me. Help! Thief! Help! Ugh, not a single day went by without trouble. I bolted in that direction and... Aha! Not today, thief! Are you crazy? I'm not the thief. Let me go. Just then, I heard a thud and saw another man in blue being tackled to the ground by two security guards, while a woman snatched the bag out of his hands. Oops, I just caught the wrong guy. I immediately released him. Turned out he was chasing the thief too, but no matter how much I apologized, he kept rambling that I was a violent lunatic and even suspected me of being an accomplice. This guy was unbelievable. He better wish he'd never see me again. Else the next kick won't be a mistake. Today is my first day at school. My disguise was so good, even I couldn't recognize myself. There's no way I'd get caught. From now on, I'll go by the name Alexia. Much better than 036, isn't it? Wait, I know her. Bella Smith, one of my objects. <laughs> wow, the audacity of those girls to pick on their own principal's daughter. All right, Alexia's coming to your rescue. But not in my normal way. So, here comes a clumsy nerd who accidentally bumped into them, spilling coffee over them, buying time for the prey to run away. The mean girls let out horrified yelps, then yelled at me before running to the restroom. <laughs> then, I turned to see Bella talking to a boy. Oh no, it wasn't just any boy. It was that obnoxious jerk from the mall. What are the odds? Then, they headed toward me. While Bella kept thanking me, I caught a staring look from this guy. You seem familiar. Have we met before? No, no way. How's that possible? It's my first day here. Phew, he seemed not to recognize me. 
So, he's Clark, Bella's best friend. Now, how am I supposed to approach her when her company was this guy? <sighs> Anyways, my first class is about to start. Now, excuse me. I have this perfect cover of a schoolgirl that I need to keep up. Newbie, tell me, where was the American Declaration of Independence signed? Um, at the bottom of the paper, madam? The whole class burst into laughter. How embarrassing! But how was I supposed to know? Papa didn't teach me this. Then suddenly, I heard this alarming sound. Don't panic. I'll handle this. Follow me to the hallway. But no one did. Instead, they laughed even louder. I was still dumbfounded when a nice girl told me it's just an end-of-class bell. Oh, that's what it was. Finally, a break from all those exhausting lessons. Now let's check if the food is safe. Okay, pass. I was about to eat the carrot. Then the mean girls from earlier appeared. Yes, eat it. That'll help your poor eyesight. And this is for staining my dress. Then they strutted off. Ugh. In other places, those folks would have known the taste of my fist. Hey, Alexia. Alexia. So noisy. This place is like a beehive. Alexia. Oh, wait. That's my new name. I turned around to see Bella. She wanted to join me for lunch. Here comes the chance. But nope. The tag-along Clark is also here. Jeez. <sighs> I asked Bella why those mean girls teased her, the principal's daughter, but she just shook her head unknowingly. Hmm, but I think I've kind of figured out the reason after talking with her. I noticed that she was a bit slower than her peers, as when I cracked a joke, it took her a while to understand and laugh along. So, prying out information from her should be easy. If only... You've just moved here. How do you know she's the principal's daughter? Uh... Uh, I heard from others. This party pooper. Jeez. <sighs> the first week didn't go too well as I was still getting used to being called Alexia and not inspecting my own locker. Also, this load of homework? In general, I enjoy learning stuff at school, but the mission hasn't progressed one bit. I had to pick up the pace, so using the voice changer, I tricked Mr. Smith to leave his office, then sneaked in there. But suddenly, Bella came in. Panicking, I blurted out I was cleaning the desk for the principal. She seemed convinced and even joined me. Another time, I saw the principal talking to someone in the hallway and was about to take pictures with my spy camera pen when Clark appeared and bombarded me with stupid questions. Jesus Christ, if things carried on like this, when on earth would I finish my mission? One day, I spotted Bella in trouble with the mean girls again. Ugh, do these brats ever learn? This is too much. I need to settle this once and for all. So I ran over and quickly pulled Bella away, telling her to run. Then I threw my famous flying kicks, along with some front sweeps, and got all the meanies knocked on the ground in a blink. Justice served. <laughs> I dusted my hands together in triumph, but has Clark just witnessed everything? This guy was way too suspicious. He probably would ruin my secret mission someday. I need to look into this guy. And it didn't take long for me to find out he wasn't from a wealthy family like most of the other students. He got into this prestigious school on a scholarship for being brainy. Now here I was in Clark's family's bakery. Oh, this girl has his eyes and hair color. We talked and immediately clicked. She was Enola, Clark's sister. She has Down syndrome, but she's a real talent. Look, aren't her designs stunning? I was flipping through Enola's sketchbook when Clark suddenly showed up and dragged me outside. Why did you follow me here? I know you're up to something. Who is the suspicious one here? It's you who always coincidentally appears wherever I am. I only followed you here because you've been stalking me and looking shady. That got Clark speechless. Then his sister came to us saying, Uh, Alexia, Enola really likes playing with you. Rather, let her come inside. His attitude completely changed hearing that. He gently told me that other people often tease Enola because of her condition. He also apologized for misunderstanding me and offered me a free cinnamon swirl. Wasn't this the first time I'd seen him smile? I'd never been so close to him like this. And suddenly, I felt something turning in my stomach. Perhaps I'd eaten too much. <laughs> After that, our conflict was naturally settled. Me and Clark became closer and I got to know other aspects of him. He was really gentle and helpful. The more we talked, the more flutters I felt. Oh no, what's wrong with me? Worse still, I even started to feel uncomfortable when Bella was close to Clark. 
He always helps her with the smallest things, like opening the door, holding an umbrella for her, and even opening water bottles. She always overacted as if she wanted Clark to protect her all the time. No, get yourself together, Alexia. No, 036, you have a mission to do. So, I faked having period cramps to get out of P.E. and sneak into Mr. Smith's office again. I rummaged through the trash can, but there's nothing useful. Then, I noticed a locked drawer. And guess what? There was a notepad and an envelope full of money. Then, by shading the paper with a pencil, the letters gradually appeared. It's an address and a time. So, the principal's going to make a transaction there? Got it. Then, on the way out, I clumsily knocked over a pile of documents on his desk. Wait, there was a picture of a woman holding two babies with scribbles. I'll love you three forever. But Bella told me she was an only child. Then, who's this? And here's that place. The middle of nowhere. Exactly where something fishy would happen. 429. It's almost time. Someone's coming. Wait, it's the woman in that picture. She's older, but it's definitely her. And then Principal Smith appeared. They seemed really close. They'd been talking and he handed her an envelope. That envelope? So she was his. What now? Haven't given up on stalking others. Okay, listen carefully. I think Principal Smith is involved in a financial violation case. But not just that. I just got him two-timing. See? N no way. That's my... Okay, I will keep this secret for you on one condition. Let me join this investigation. The principal has been supportive of my scholarship. I don't think he's that type of person. What? He wanted to work with me? That sounded risky, but as long as I kept my mouth shut about the organization, I could spend some Bella free time with him. Good, right? A few days later, Clark told me to meet him at a cafe to discuss the investigation. But it's been ages and he still hasn't shown up. Then out of nowhere, a beautiful cake was presented in front of my eyes. Oh my, it's Clark, singing happy birthday and even gave me a present. Birthday? I myself didn't know when my birthday was. Why, he... And the cake, did he make it himself for me? Aw, he's so sweet. I got so emotional that I almost blurted out my feelings to him. But right at that moment, Bella, out of the blue, jumped in between us. Typical Bella, never leave us alone. Turns out, she was actually the one to insist her dad let her see my student records and make my first birthday cake ever. Thank you guys, I've never had a birthday before because I have no, uh, no, because my parents are always away. Then we should celebrate properly at your house, how about that? What? Why did he suggest that? But then Clark winked at me. Heh, <laughs> seems like we had a plan. Arriving at her home, we were warmly greeted by Bella's parents. It was such a delicious home-cooked meal. So this was what it was like to have a family. Bella had this all the time? But poor her. She didn't know about her father's a cheater. <sighs> we were in the middle of dinner when Clark asked Mr. Smith about a science project he was doing. Then Clark winked at me again. That's my cue. So I excused myself to use the restroom, then sneaked into Mr. Smith's office. This pen was magical. Let's see what Bella's dear father was hiding. Oh, he withdrew the same amount of money each month. Yay! Today was a success! Thanks to Clark's clever plan, I would finally got something useful. Suddenly, our eyes met and he looked at me gently while leaning closer. I was ready for a kid when my boss called me. I did not assign this mission for you to play house with that criminal. You have three days. Or else, I'll have someone more capable taking care of this. Such a waste of your papa's expectation. Am I really that useless? Thinking I'd let papa down, I couldn't help but burst into tears. What happened? Who's that? Tell me. I'll handle him. Clark, it may sound weird, but I'm actually a spy. Uh, what? Clark was shocked, obviously, so we sat down on a bench and I blurted out everything to him. Clark didn't say a word and just gently held me in his arms, which made me feel so relieved. You may wonder why Bella and I were in this deserted place. The thing is, a few days after that call, my boss ordered me to bring Bella here to kidnap her and use the documents I gathered to blackmail the principal into resigning. I guess that could help me get rid of the third wheel Bella and have Clark all to myself, right? Oh, isn't that our school's vice president? 
so he was behind everything after all. Then suddenly... Freeze! Hands in the air! Oh my god, the police? Why were they here? Along with Mr. Smith and Clark? We're so doomed! Except, it was my master plan. After receiving the text from my boss, I almost followed his order. But then, I remembered Papa's words. He always told me to never lose my moral compass, and never harm others to achieve personal goals. Bella was a good person and shouldn't be punished for whatever her father did. I couldn't betray my first friend like that. So I told Clark and we set up a plan to find out who was behind all this. And here we are. The vice principal was revealed to have hired my organization to spy on the principal to overthrow him. And when he couldn't find any dirt on Mr. Smith, he turned to use Bella as a leverage against her father. How despicable. Also, I can't believe that the new boss led our organization down an evil path like that. But it's not the only truth revealed. But Principal Smith, how do you explain your monthly money withdrawal? I had a close friend who unfortunately passed away at a young age. He asked me to send his money to his illegitimate son and daughter, whom he'd kept a secret due to family pressure. So there's nothing more going on between you and my mom, right? Huh? What did his mother have to do with this? Turns out the woman he met up with the other day was Clark's mom. That means Clark and Enola were the kids in the picture? What a twist! In that case, thank you for taking care of my family all this time. How foolish of me to suspect you and mom. And even investigate you. My apologies. You... you investigated him before? Yes. Actually, it's not a coincidence that I caught you spying on him. Sorry for keeping secrets, but I knew with your impulsive nature, you'd jump to conclusions and approach my mom. Huh? Impulsive? That's how he saw me? Then he knew me pretty well. <laughs> Why is everything so confusing? Can you explain it to me? Did you befriend me just to investigate my dad? Bella, I'm so sorry for how things went down, but please believe me, our friendship is real. Fortunately, Bella was understanding, and we remained good friends. Oh, actually, good sisters, because the principal adopted me after I left the organization. <laughs> And I still visit the bakery often to hang out with Enola. Enola is so lucky to have a brother who takes care of her. I wish I could have one. No, sorry, I can't do that. Why? Because I'll take care of you in a different way. Ugh, who's calling at this hour? Orla? Your sister is having a wedding this weekend. Make arrangements to attend. My sister Rowan is having a what now? She had never had a date, and she's only 19. Are you still listening, Orla? Surely you have a boyfriend by now, so bring him along. Boyfriend? Yeah, right. As if I haven't been absolutely caught up with school lately. No matter what I did, in mom's eyes, I was always the idle one who partied around with boys, while Rowan was obedient and hardworking. Ugh! You see, my parents divorced ages ago, so I live with my father in Atlanta, and my mom and sister Rowan live in the suburbs of Denver with my grandma. It's been a long time since I've met her, so I wouldn't mind paying a visit on this occasion. Only, where am I meant to find a guy at this short notice? My dear hometown, it's been a hot minute! Oh, there's Paul! Sorry I kept you waiting. Let's go, gorgeous. Let me introduce my boyfriend, a local college boy that I found on the internet. Even though we're on business terms, look at him. Handsome, gallant, and polite. I hit the jackpot. As we pulled up at the house, I saw my grandma waiting outside with a casual looking guy. Oh, he must be my future brother-in-law. I happily ran over to hug grandma. Rowan, you're back. Mata has been waiting for you. My, my. Look at our match made in heaven. Is she confusing me with Rowan? I was about to correct her when suddenly the guy pulled me close and said, We are indeed a charming couple, aren't we, honey? Excuse me? Where is he putting his hand on? And is his eyesight just as bad as grandma's to think I was Rowan? Just then, Rowan stepped forward. But strangely, she just smiled at us then linked arms with Paul. And this is my boyfriend, Grandma. Do you think we look great together? What's wrong with everyone? Had I been zapped into some parallel universe or something? 
Suddenly, Rowan dragged me across the garden. Then she told me how Grandma had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, which had progressed so quickly recently, meaning sometimes she forgets. Other times she remembers, muddling everyone and everything. Not wanting to upset or confuse her, my mom and sister decided to act according to Grandma's memories, including this wedding. And of course, that Mada guy is not my sister's real fiance, just a close classmate. But now she's confusing the two of us. So the lead role in this wedding play is yours now. Grandma's memory was deteriorating. Yeah, that sucks. But was a fake wedding necessary? Also, the thought of pairing up with that rude Mada guy sickened me. No way! Listen to your sister, kid. Everyone is doing it for Grandma. Did he just call me kid? Okay, that's it. This guy needs to know his place. But before I could jump at him, both my parents appeared and started lecturing me. Ugh, whatever. I stood my ground. Faking a marriage is ridiculous. Happy now? Dad's little girl is acting spoiled again. Please, I raised her just fine. And you, if you'd taken care of your mother better, she wouldn't have been this way. Not again. They only see each other once every couple of years, but the bickering always followed almost instantly. <sighs> What's going on? You two have never been at odds. What's wrong? At the sight of Grandma, Mom and Dad suddenly took a 180. A moment ago, they were screaming each other's heads off, but now they're being all smiley, lovey-dovey. How ridiculous. But did Grandma really not remember that my parents were divorced? Her condition seemed to be as bad as they said. This meant I had no choice but to go along with their plan to make her happy. However, I was no professional actor. Constantly improvising according to Grandma's memories was not easy, especially when I was stuck with the annoying Maida for a scene partner. My mind was too full of thoughts to sleep properly, so I got up extra early and went for a stroll in the garden. Out of nowhere, Maida ran to me and grabbed my hand. Did you sleep well last night, Bay? Huh? Who's he acting for? In this empty garden? Or is this just an excuse to touch me? I forced my hand away from his, but then he had the audacity to whisper in my ear. Shush, Grandma's watching us from upstairs. Ugh, what a creep. Meanwhile, Rowan said she wanted to please Grandma, but actually, she wasn't even a little bit cooperative. At lunch, while I had to squeeze out a smile as made a spoon-fed me soup, Rowan was being distant toward Paul, her boyfriend. Paul, my sister also likes being fed. Right, that's her favorite dish. Paul got the point right away, so he scooped up some soup and gave it to Rowan as Grandma watched expectantly. But for some reason, my sister seemed irritated, shoved his hand away, and said she's allergic to it, which was some total nonsense. Grandma was obviously discontent hearing that, then stood up to leave the table first. What's the matter with you, Rowan? You didn't have to look so annoyed in front of Grandma. Why can't you just work with Paul? That's how Rowan's always been. She's shy and couldn't open up easily to strange guys as you can. Uh, what did she mean by that? Before I could reply, Dad came to my defense. How can you say that? Isn't Orla trying her best to play her part and not make Grandma suspect a thing? Oh, so you two are doing great, and we're just ruining everything? There they go again. Usually Rowan and I would just stand there and watch, because only our grandma can stop their fights. And this time was no exception. As soon as they saw grandma, my parents immediately turned around and held each other's hands. Mita was just as quick when he grabbed my arm as well as grandma's, and then invited us for a walk. Hey, who are you? Why are you being so friendly to us? Oh dear. It was only a few seconds ago and her memory of him had already vanished. I immediately said Maida and I went to the same college and he was visiting me. <sighs> I thought that was it, but no. Speaking of college, she immediately asked why we were home when we should be at school. The whole family froze at her reaction. My parents carefully mentioned the wedding to see if she remembered anything, but she snapped. How can you talk about marriage when my two grandchildren are still of school age? Have you two lost your mind? So, the next morning, I had to go to the university with Rowan. But the cherry on top was riding this tiny pink bicycle together per grandma's order. <sighs> this was embarrassing, but how can we refuse? She only recalled the old memories. So I wandered around here all day waiting for Maida and Rowan to finish their classes. Suddenly, I spotted Paul with some girls. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, Orla. Uh, 
I... I'm just giving directions to these freshmen. Actually, I'm waiting to pick up your sister. Wow, Paul seems to have a real crush on Rowan. I have to help my timid as a hare sister seize the opportunity. I took Paul to the lecture hall just as class was wrapping up, then pushed Rowan towards him, wished them a happy outing, and quickly pulled Maida away to give the couple some space. Finally, I could go home. But just as we reached the college gate, we saw Dad helping Grandma come this way. Seeing my face turn pale, Dad immediately explained that Grandma thought today was my first day of college, so she insisted on coming to pick us up. Jeez, it was bad enough coming here on a tiny pink bike. I drew the line at my dad and grandma picking me up. I wasn't a preschooler. Uh, I was assigned to tidy the football field. It's my turn on duty today. Don't wait for me. Oh, is that so? Take your time. I'll look around for a while. I looked at Maida, hoping he had some idea to get me out of this, but he just grinned and took the broom from me. Come on, let's clean up this place. I was only gonna fake cleaning a bit, but turns out Grandma's the most meticulous supervisor ever. Orla, there's some trash over there. Look closely, honey, there are dry leaves in the corner. Then, you have to wipe these stains with a wet cloth. As soon as she went away, I lay on the field panting with exhaustion. Aren't you tired? Oh man, I'm already drained out. Can't imagine how bad it's gonna get for me at Grandma's age. Poor her. It's scary how one day we might forget our family. Birth, aging, sickness, death, these are things we can't change. Orla, but one thing we could do is cherishing every moment with our loved ones as these times are special. I was so wrong when initially I considered Maida as an impolite, annoying person. His deep thoughts made me feel comfortable enough to pour my heart out about my family. Why my parents divorced, why I didn't visit grandma as much as I should have, and all the fights with my sister Rowan. We talked loads, and it felt like we've known each other forever. That night, I kept tossing and turning, and couldn't stop thinking about how Maida diligently helped me clean up, about our conversation in the afternoon, and the way he helped me stand up. Oh, what's wrong with me? It's undeniable that this side of him is so attractive. But there's one problem. When we were leaving, he said to me, See you tomorrow, Rowan. Yes, Rowan. How could he? Was it because all these acts in front of my grandma got him mixed up? Or is it because she's always on his mind? <sighs> Never mind, it's none of my business. The next day I was sick of strolling around the campus, so I went to class with Rowan and Maida. Rowan's right, they seemed really close. During the lesson, both of them listened attentively to the lecturer, then turned to discuss with each other. Maida also patiently explained the part Rowan didn't understand to her. Hey, what are we gonna have for lunch? What's good in the canteen? You will take this course next year too, so focus. And then they got back to their discussion, as if I was invisible. Ugh, how frustrating. Hey, are you jealous? <laughs> Don't be, we're just friends. Why did she say that? Jealous? That's absurd. Still sulking? How about we go to the cinema tonight? I'll help you too. And here we are. As planned, I would sit next to Maida while Rowan would be with Paul. Sounds good. But when Rowan was about to settle next to Paul, Maida immediately took that seat. So he didn't want to sit next to me, or he didn't want Rowan to be with Paul? Either way, he obviously didn't have feelings for me. As soon as the movie ended, I rushed out of there, just to catch some familiar sight of... Grandma and Dad again! She started nagging and insisted on escorting me home. Why are you still out here at this hour, Rowan? There was a lot to prepare for the wedding. Now the wedding's back on? Oh dear, you two. A groom-to-be shouldn't be playing around like this. Paul? Why don't you pair me with Maida like before, Grandma? After all, we were back to our former partners. I'm with Paul and Maida with Rowan. Well. It's just a fake wedding, so it doesn't matter who I was marrying to, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? And then, it's like Grandma had telepathy to hear my wish. Right before the ceremony started, her memory suddenly reset. What are you doing sitting here? It's time! Get up there! She dragged Maida to the altar and told the best man Paul to step aside. Oh, how cute. <laughs> and everything after that was like a dream. I walked down the aisle, 
Nada gently looked at me and sincerely made the vow. His acting was flawless, while I was buzzing with nerves. Sensing this, he gently held my hands to calm me down. I... I... do. The crowd burst into applause, and among them, I spotted Grandma's joyful face. Despite the exciting moment, I didn't let myself forget another important mission, which was helping my big sister to get a boyfriend. So I threw the bouquet to Rowan and winked at Paul. But weirdly, she didn't seem happy about this. That evening, after all the guests left, I went to look for Maida. To be honest, I really wanted to know if he felt the same as me. Here he was, but why did he look so agitated? I was about to call him, when out of the blue he bolted to punch. Paul! Repeatedly! You jerk, stay away from Rowan, got it? What's going on? They're fighting because of Rowan? So Maida really was pretending at the ceremony. He liked Rowan, not me. Didn't you say you're just friends with Maida? What's all this? Friends don't get jealous when someone else is flirting with you. Orla, it's not what you think. Knew it. She thought she could fool me again. I turned around and was about to chase after Paul to check on him, but someone's hand grabbed mine. It was... Maida. Paul is not as kind as you think he is. Turned out, the reason why Rowan was awkward around Paul was because he always tried to touch her. Not to mention girls on social media were calling him out for taking advantage of them and cheating on them. Both Maida and Rowan knew it all, but they tried to put up with it through the wedding. However, he kept crossing the line. So today, Maida decided to teach him a lesson. So how I acted at the movies that day and just now was to protect my friend, not because I'm jealous. I didn't know he did so much for my family. Orla, how come you're here? Isn't it still the school year? And also, your parents are so weird. When did they make up with each other? Oh, she called me by my name. She even questioned who Maida was. Her memory seems to be perfectly back. Thinking our grandma had recovered, Rowan quickly called her parents. We were over the moon thinking a miracle had happened. But then, the doctor crushed our newfound joy, saying it was a phenomenon called terminal lucidity. Meaning, our grandma didn't have much time left. None of us wanted to believe it. But there was nothing else we could do but make the most out of the precious little time we had left with her. I also decided to put college on hold to live with grandma during her last days. Each morning, we would go for a walk together as I listened to her stories of the old days, and then share with her some of my fondest memories. Mom and Dad still bicker and then make up. Some things never change. <laughs> but Rowan and I are getting along much better. Turns out we have more in common than we realized. And Maida, he still comes over to visit Grandma. Then one day, Maida was saying goodbye to me when Grandma suddenly shouted out loud, Where do you think you're going? Still got loads to prepare. You think the wedding is a joke or something? Wedding again? We froze and looked at each other till Grandma yelled at us a second time. But this round, maybe Maida and I wouldn't need to act anymore. Because when I asked him if he was ready to take a vow again, he replied, Of course, Orla. I'm always ready to say those words to you every day. Finally! My spectacular sweet 16th is here! I spent months deliberating over every tiny detail of this perfect butterfly-themed party. Better yet, all the VIPs from the fashion industry were invited! Pretty impressive, huh? By the way, I'm Charlotte Stone, a fashion influencer with over 500,000 followers on Instagram. One day, I'm going to become an iconic designer just like Tori Burch. This party was my big chance to get noticed by all of these big shots. But wait, Ava? What on earth is she doing? Don't you realize how important it is to sort out garbage? It's not all junk. Like this one is very valuable. Oh my gosh! Ugh. And now she was replacing the guest's napkin with some biodegradable tissue. Suddenly, she startled and rushed to an incoming guest. Your scarf! Is that real mink fur? You ruthless monster! Oh no, that was Trixie Maxflower, the famous drag queen, who's now strutting off in anger thanks to my sister's outburst. Ava was ruining everything with her hippie ways, and all of my guests were leaving. No, 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 it's all ruined! And it's all her fault! Ugh! This wasn't the first time Ava had pulled things like this. She called herself an eco-activist, and constantly brought rubbish home to remake into... 
things, argued with anyone who didn't sort their waste properly, and forced everyone she knew to join climate change protests. The worst part was, I was always dragged into those dumb campaigns. It's super embarrassing being called the trash girl's little sis. Lonnie, where are you going? Wait up! Hey trash girl, why don't you recycle this into skating shoes, huh? Next thing I knew, a gross banana peel landed smack bang in my face. Lottie, are you okay? No! My party was going perfectly until you barged in with your lunatic eco-anxiety. I wish you'd left my party, not them. Actually, I wish I didn't have a tree-hugging, trash-loving sister at all. Then I pushed Ava aside and stormed off. She'd gone too far this time. But maybe what I said was a bit much? The next morning, I woke up to see a birthday gift from Ava on my bedside table. It was this cute bracelet. Made from recycled plastic, of course. It made me smile and reminded me of all the time she'd taken care of me. I went to her room to thank her for her gift, but she wasn't there. Then I spotted a letter on her bed. Mom, Dad, Charlotte, I'm going away to live by my beliefs and values without affecting you all. Don't look for me. Oh no, don't tell me that it's all because of what I said yesterday. She knew I didn't mean it, right? I'm sure she'll calm down and come back soon. But then, one week passed, then a month, and now it's been almost two years and my sister still hasn't returned home. We've looked for her at environmental events, but still had no hint. Until, one day, I stumbled upon a YouTuber who talked about discovering an eco-friendly island run by a community of environmentalists. Hmm, that sounds like Ava's style. Wait a minute, I've seen this before. This island looked just like the one from the picture hanging in Ava's room. There it is! That must be the island's coordinates! I gotta go find my sister! Oh boy, that was a long ride. Now I just need to find a boat that will take me to the island. Let's check the map. Huh? These are my stuff? Right at that moment, a woman reached me. Hey, what are you doing with my bag? I quickly apologized and returned her bag, then rushed back to the train to find mine. But I was too late. No phone, no map. What to do now? I asked around, but no one had heard of this eco-island. Hopeless, I slumped onto a bench, when suddenly a man tapped my shoulder and told me that his boat was heading to that island. I followed him to the harbor, but when I saw the boat, I immediately changed my mind and turned to leave, but the man wouldn't let go of my hand. I tried my best to resist as his two scary-looking crewmates headed towards us. Oh no, this isn't gonna end well. Let her go! Noah, is this a kidnapping? Should I call the cops? Panicked, the man let go of me, then grumbled and left. I trembled in shock, and it took ages for my heart rate to return to normal. I can't imagine what Ava had to go through out there all this time. Why are you trying so hard to get to the Eco Island? It doesn't seem like you're seen. Now that I'd calmed down and looked at this guy properly, ooh, he was cute, and he knew about the island? Turns out he's a former resident and was now taking his sister there. I asked him if he knew anyone named Ava Stone, but he shook his head, saying that most people who came to the island changed their names to start a new life. Okay, so I just have to see for myself if Ava was actually there. However, Noah said he couldn't help, because the island has strict rules concerning newcomers. So I had to lie that I was also an eco-activist to convince them to bring me along. And... Ha! It worked! My hunch told me that I was now one step closer to finding Ava. That evening, Noah set up a tent on the beach and we waited there for a boat that was scheduled to take us to the island in the morning. Seeing Noah take care of Ellie made me miss my sister so much. My selfish stupidity had driven her away, but now I'm going to put things right. I'll definitely find you, Ava. Next day, Noah woke me up so early that even the gulls weren't about. We got on this rickety-looking sailboat without any engine. Hello? Were we going to the island or back to the primeval times? Noah helped sailing the boat while I had to take care of the ropes. This was way harder than it looked. I could barely feel my arm muscles. Best wind ever. Charlotte, you're our lucky charm. <sighs> but yeah, at least I had this beautiful view to compensate. Suddenly, the rope slipped out of my hand causing the winch handle to spin and fling my bracelet into the sea. Oh no! 
Noah tried to stop me, but I was already deep in the water and immediately got swarmed by garbage. There it is! I pushed the trash aside, grabbed the bracelet, and was about to swing back when a fishnet caught my foot! Ah! I'm stuck! While struggling, I saw a dead sea turtle tangled in plastic bags drifting by. Is it foreshadowing my own fate? Then, I felt a tug on my waist, and suddenly I was rising above the water. Through coughs and splutters for air, I saw Noah. He'd saved me again! How could you be so foolish? You're lucky I reached you in time. No, you're the lucky one who just got yourself a new girlfriend. Me? What's wrong with you? Your actions could have killed yourself and my brother, and all you can think about is flirting? I'm sorry, but that bracelet is really important to me. And I'm serious, what is your type of girl, Noah? M me? Oh, I... maybe someone... mature and brave? Got it. From now on, I'll be more mature then. By the next dawn, I could finally see our destination. But right when I stepped foot on the shore, two men who seemed to be village guards stopped me. You said you were bringing one sister, not two. Who is she? She's with me, Noah said. I tried my best to convince them, but they insisted on following the rule. No outsiders on the island. I didn't want any drama. All I wanted was to find my sister. Hey, the chief is coming! Jeez, what else is happening? I grabbed Noah's hand and hid behind his back. Please don't leave me alone. I won't. With my eyes closed, I heard someone step in and the female voice said, What's all this commotion about? Wait, that voice. I took a peek at the village chief. It's Ava. Ava, is it really you? Charlotte? I found my sister. I rushed to hug her as tight as I could. I've missed you so much. Oh, little Lottie, how did you get here? I've missed you too. I'm so sorry for what I said. I... It's okay. I've forgotten about it already. Come, let me show you around. Turns out, the day she left home, she gathered like-minded people to come to this island and save its ecosystem. They built this village and a dike to protect the island from rising sea levels. When Ava asked me about my journey here, I told her all about the struggles I had to go through and how Noah had saved me. You like Noah? I guess so, but what's wrong with that? I mean, you always hated my eco lifestyle, but Noah and I, you do know we share the same mindset, right? That's true. They had many things in common. Well, I was like, living in another world to them. It's okay, I've changed a lot since the last time you saw me, Ava. I was wondering if I could, um, stay here for a while? Ava, agreed! Yay! Now I will have some more time to persuade my sister to go home and to win my man's heart. So as the newest member of the village, the next day I started helping everyone with their tasks, like collecting coconuts, making DIY stuff, and planting corals. I even made use of my fashion sense and came up with stylish designs that were also environmentally friendly. Although Noah was too busy to see my creations, other villagers were very excited about them and often visited my workshop to try on new clothes. Hey sunshine, these designs are top notch. You're like a tailor goddess. Um, that's Sam, my coworker at the workshop. He seems odd, but he's actually a genius who could create technological devices out of scrapped materials. Each day he gave me a different kind of weird gift. This guy was definitely having a crush on me, but even his unicorn bicycle made from seashell couldn't move me, as I only had eyes for Noah. Speaking of Noah, he just walked past my workshop, right on time to show him this new material. I eagerly ran towards him, but stopped as Ava suddenly pulled him toward the hammock leaned closer and whispered something in his ear. What? So, when Noah said he preferred mature girls, he meant Ava? But what was my sister thinking? She knew I liked him. After that day, I couldn't concentrate on anything because of those two. Noah started to make excuses to not clean the coral reefs with me. And guess who was behind it all? Ava. Ouch. Great. I accidentally just stepped on the sea urchin. So I was rushed to the medical hut. Ava also came over to ask if I was okay, but I refused to talk to her. Or Noah. The wound swelled up, and I still couldn't walk normally a few days later. Surprisingly, Ellie started being nice and took care of me, 
and even went spying on Noah and Ava for me. Those two are made for each other! I even saw them secretly kissing a few times! They're the perfect king and queen of this island! Now there is no doubt that they are dating behind my back. How could Ava do this to me? Feeling betrayed, I dragged myself to the workshop. Maybe work can distract me from all this mess in my head. But here I was, stuck with Sam and his cheesy pickup lines. You must be exhausted, because you've been running through my mind all day. Ugh, just leave me alone. I stormed out of there, but tripped and fell over. Right then, a hand reached out to help me. It was Ava. Jeez, she's the last person I want to see right now. You don't have to pretend you care about me. You know full well that I like Noah, but you still got with him. Charlotte, what are you talking about? I'm leaving today, and so should everyone in this village. This place is for cowards who ignore the real eco problems that are happening in the outside world. There, I let it all off my chest. But unexpectedly, the villagers came out of the bushes, holding decorations and a birthday cake with my name on it. They were throwing a surprise party for me. Oh no, I, I didn't mean to. Disheartened by my words, they all left. I guess you saw me with the chief when we were planning your birthday surprise. There was nothing going on between us. I thought you'd grown up, Charlotte. But I was wrong then. God, the guilt I felt right now was killing me. Frustrated and ashamed, I knew I couldn't stay here any longer. I waited until everyone was asleep to sneak to the beach and set sail on a small boat into the stormy night. But I couldn't make it far before a giant wave engulfed me and the boat. This is... The end, I guess. But when I opened my eyes, Noah's face appeared in front of me. Did you just save me again? No, the chief did. But where is she? Noah didn't say anything, but just looked glumly out to sea. Wait, this is not happening. My sister can't be out there, right? No, no, no. How can I live knowing that my sister drowned because of me? Are you crying for your missing shoe? I turned around to see Ava, alive and well. Ava, thank God! I giddily jumped towards her, but ouch, I forgot that my leg was still hurt. I'm so sorry for how stupid and selfish I was. Don't be foolish next time. Nothing's going on between me and Noah. He's all yours. I looked at Noah and we both turned to motto red. The next day, Ava gathered everyone around so I could publicly apologize to them. I was ready for the villagers to throw coconut shells at me, but instead they admitted that my words were partly true. This lifestyle needs to be promoted to the world, since everyone deserves to live in a clean and healthy environment that requires a joint effort. Then they all agreed that the perfect person to influence the young generation about this matter was me. Wow, I didn't expect that, but yes, I'm willing to carry out this meaningful mission. And Noah volunteered to leave the island and go inspire the outside world with me. Only then, Ellie apologized to me and confessed she'd made up the stories about Ava and Noah just to make me give up on flirting with her brother. I thought you'd only cause him trouble, but now I know he likes you a lot. So promise that you'll make life easy for him? I'll try my best, kid. Promise. It's been five years since we left the island, and I fulfilled my dream of becoming a famous fashion designer. But most importantly, I was able to make fashion eco-friendly. Pretty cool, right? When the fashion show ended, I went on stage and the crowd went wild with applause. My creative inspiration comes from my dear sister Ava, who's shown me how vital a clean environment is to each and every one of us. I also want to thank Noah, my incredible boyfriend, for his unconditional love and support. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. As I finished the speech, Noah came on stage with this huge bouquet, while Ava and the villagers showered me with hugs and praise. I guess one trip to an eco island could change your entire life, right? Augustine and I almost took down this fake Roblox plushie smuggling empire when the gang leader suddenly turned vigilant and ordered his members to arm lock us. Pablo, you got it all wrong. We're here to make a business deal. You don't fool me, you sneaky little rats. Think you can catch me? I am invincible! <laughs> Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Pizza's here. Please take your order. Did any of you morons order pizza? Sorry, boss. I, I did. 
I was starving. Please, could I have a bite quickly before executing these snakes? Go get the door, you dumbo. You, hands over your head. Pablo then came, hide behind the door. As it opened and standing there was Jane. Hi, lunchtime. Jane then pulled up her skirt slowly, revealing her stocking. While the gang were dumbfounded, Augustine quickly restrained the gang member, while Jane slammed the door onto Pablo. And me? I stomped onto the guy's foot, elbowed him in the face, and pinned him on the ground. Phew, all hail Queen Jane. Hi, my name is Naomi, a special agent, and these are my partners, Augustine and Jane. With Augustine as leader, we three have successfully cracked the hardest cases, including this one. Augustine is such a respectable senior agent to me, while Jane is actually my annoying stepsister slash partner. It's your turn to write Pablo's case report. Don't push it onto me. Why do you always try to get away with tasks? Just like how you made me do all the dishes at home all the time, too. Team, we got a new case. Amy, straight A student. Lawrence High's representative to the upcoming United Nations event. Missing since Monday. Urgent request from parents and the school to bring the subject back safely. Suspect number one, Shirley, direct competitor for the school representative title, a mean girl in disguise. So, starting tomorrow, we'll be students at Lauren High to investigate it. Can I join the girl posse and befriend Shirley? Nothing helps spilling the tea easier than blending in with the gossip girls. Okay, but we also got Diane, Amy's stepsister, quiet and shy. Parents are freaking out and asking her to be watched 24 7 too. Jane, what do you think? I can approach Diane and keep an eye on her. Great. Remember team, do not act by yourself under any circumstance. Lawrence, hi, I'm coming for you. On the first day of school with my excellent disguise, I confidently strode to the classroom. My mean girl covers quickly got everyone's attention, including this guy. Hey cutie, let me show you around, and you can show me the way to your heart. Marco, Lawrence High's jock with a notoriously long list of ex-girlfriends. Meanwhile, Augustine's also taking a good chunk of the ladies' hearts, including Shirley's, my target. So, I purposely walked past her, showcasing my $200,000 Hermes bag, and... Hey you! Yes, take the bait, fishies. You seem to have a sensible fashion style. Wanna join our group? Sure, I'm Naomi. Right then, Jane passed by. In the shy, nerdy girl covers, of course. Hold on for a second, rookie. Did you borrow your granny's dress for school? Right, Naomi? I... I think... Oh, this hurts my eyes too. Who in God's name wears pastel pink in 2023? Shirley and her entourage were cackling, while Jane gave me a hostile look and stormed off. Oh please, she didn't have to take it so personally. She should thank me for that instead, as now she can naturally be friends with Diane too. Since then, I started hanging around with Shirley and the girls. They loved gossiping, which is indeed pointless until the topic of Amy came up. Have guys seen Amy around at all recently? Amy, who on earth? Amy Hayward, the one competing against you for the school's representative. Oh, that stupid contest. I couldn't care less about it actually. Thank God it's over. I only joined it cause my dad kept insisting. Shirley didn't even remember Amy, nor did she want to compete with her. And now that I've noticed, she's boisterous at times, but actually quite straightforward. My guts are telling me it's not her. So, I brought up my concerns about the case at our next meeting. I'm pretty sure Shirley is clear. What? Do you even think before saying? She's her number one suspect. Plus, from what Diane told me, she's always picking on other students. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she has ill intentions towards Amy. You need to stop judging people too quickly. <laughs> Excuse me? How about you stop siding with the devils? Or you find it hard because you're one too? Enough. Let's just keep your assumptions on hold for now. We need more clues before acting on anything. Dang it. If only I got some solid evidence. Jane just always slowed down the investigation. So the next day, I went to find Diane myself to ask some more questions about Amy. But Marco stopped me with a bunch of roses? Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. Be my girl, will you? I was still processing this when Augustine came from afar and went straight into the roses. Oops, sorry, I had my sunglasses on. Marco looked like an erupting volcano while Shirley gave an earth-shaking squeal. Eee! Oh, that body! And that grace! Oh, great lord, please spare me! During independent reading, Marco and his army came marching toward Augustine to pick a fight. But Augustine completely ignored Marco, which infuriated him even more. Hey, you! Turn your coconut head around and have some courage to face me! Augustine calmly stood up. 
returned his book as if Marco was invisible and came to ask me to have lunch with him? He pulled me out of there, leaving Marco behind, grunting like a mad pig. It feels good living student life and having the boys chasing after you. Stay away from those teenage boys for me, will you? I don't see why. Don't get your identity revealed. Don't worry, and Marco's such a kid, not my type. By the way, you want to experience a heartfelt infatuation too? Think Shirley is laying an eye on you. The look on his face is priceless. <laughs> Who would have thought this charismatic Asian is actually allergic to girls? During PE, I saw Shirley purposefully tripped and fell in the direction of Augustine, but ended up on the floor instead. Augustine then dashed over to me for help when Marco stopped him midway. Still holding grudges with Augustine, Marco announced a dodgeball war. Oh boy, didn't know what he got himself into. Augustine is our top agent. He dodged every single bullet aimed at him, let alone these plain red balls. In return, Augustine gave Marco one hit of a lifetime that knocked him down on the ground. Lucky for him, Diane was nearby and kind enough to give him a hand. Still, Marco gave the biggest grin when he spotted me and headed over to hand me a piece of paper. Will you go out with me? What a loser. He must have taken a new interest in you, Naomi. Rumor had it he asked Amy out, but then she went missing. Probably that poor girl couldn't handle him. <laughs> Marco met up with Amy before she went missing? Uh-oh, he's our number one suspect now, not Shirley. I eagerly updated Augustine on Marco. I have a feeling Marco knows something about the case that might lead us to Amy. I was thinking I could pretend to go on a date with him. That's too dangerous. What if he's behind it all? You might get into trouble, Naomi. No worries, he seems really into me. He asked Amy out and she went missing right after. Who knows what could happen to you? But he's the only lead we have now. Shirley is already out of the picture and I know how to protect myself if anything happens. Please? And yes! The time has come for me to end this case. During the date, Marco was so caring, but I was dying to know what happened to Amy that day. So, I heard you and Amy were a thing before? Nah, we never got together. How can you be so perfect? Are you an angel? I heard otherwise. Rumors had it you even went out with her. Let's just focus on us, why don't you? But I want to know more about you too. Fine, fine. If you want to know it that bad, I did ask her out, but I never saw her that day. Her sister showed up instead, sat there at a reserve table and said something about Amy wouldn't be around for a while. I thought they wanted to mess with me, so I just left. Diane knew Amy would disappear even before she went missing? Did Diane have anything to do with this? She might have been the very piece we'd overlooked from the beginning. I got to the office and saw Augustine fidgeting around. Are you okay? Did Marco do anything to you? I'm fine. And I got the biggest news. I then told Augustine and Jane everything and posed my doubts for Diane. Why Diane? She's just a vulnerable victim who gets picked on all the time. And you know by who? Shirley. She might appear vulnerable, but who knows what she's got inside. And you remember how she came to help Marco up that time? Now that I think about it, she was so worried for him. She obviously likes Marco. It's possible she might get jealous of her sister. Oh, stop. Not everyone is a jello like you. What? Team, this is getting nowhere. For now, let's just agree on keeping Diane close. Again, no one is to act by themselves. A jello? Just watch me nail this case before you do, Jane. The next morning, I saw Diane secretly watching Marco play basketball. I swear to God, Diane is definitely into him and involved in her sister's missing. But Augustine wouldn't let me do anything. That'd leave me with the only option, which is to keep Diane's activities on watch. Indeed, she's been acting very strange lately. She received regular phone calls and would get out of class just to return with a troubled face. I decided to tail her that afternoon. She looked very suspicious and kept turning around to check if anyone was following her. She's definitely hiding something. We were walking for quite some time, passing a vast area of abandoned field crops until she stopped in front of a shabby house. This is clearly not a building for residency. The whole place looked so torn apart and even had traps everywhere. Thank God I had all that training back in the academy to spot these deadly traps. Suddenly, I saw a flashing shadow sprinting right across the room. I quickly followed and saw a door leading to the dark basement. Diane, or whoever was staying here, is not going to be simple to deal with. Oh no, it's a trap! If you dare move an inch, you're done. Now tell me, who are you? Are you from the Dixie Mafia trying to get back at me? Mafia? N no, you got it wrong. I, I came to check on the electricity for this building. Please calm down. She's lying again, Mr. Gordon. I knew she was up to no good. Speak now if you want to stay intact. 
Oh no, no, no! I should have listened to Augustine and not let my stupid adrenaline take over. Is this the end of my mission? The end of my life? Suddenly, there was a loud banging sound. FBI, don't you dare touch her! It's Augustine! FBI, what? No, no, what's happening? Are you not from the gang? Jane was there for me too. She quickly took the bomb remote and turned it off. Fake bomb, are you kidding? I quickly got out of the trap safely. Special Agent Naomi Cooper, where are you hiding Amy? No, no, you got it all wrong. Mr. Gruden's Amy's biological father. How can he hurt her? I looked at Augustine and Jane, who were as shocked as I was. Mr. Gordon used to work for the gang, but he turned his life around. That's why he thought you were the old gang, coming at him for revenge. Not long ago, he contracted a serious illness that needs a kidney transplant, and Amy is the only relative he's got left. You're telling me Amy agreed to give him a kidney? Then why are you here in the dark? Why hide? Because Amy's mom hated me and forbade me from seeing her, let alone giving me a whole kidney. But Amy is my daughter with a golden heart, even though I didn't want to. She insisted on giving me a kidney so I could live on. If mom knew about it, she would never agree. That's why Amy had to run away to have the transplant done with Mr. Gordon. Where is she now? Resting in that room. Don't worry, Mr. Gordon has been taking well care of her. Meanwhile, I helped bring them food and necessities. I quickly kicked the door open and saw Amy lying on the bed. What was all the commotion, Diane? Did you bring dad some squash? Augustine, Jane, and I saw it through now. We all got it wrong this whole time. The next day, we went to find Amy's mother and had a talk with her. She was shocked at first, but after knowing everything, she realized how wrong it was to separate father and daughter. She was so touched by her daughter's precious heart and agreed to let Amy come visit Mr. Gordon from now on. Looking at the sisters makes me think about my own sis. I'm sorry. We gave each other a tight hug. We are sisters too in the end. Well, case closed. Let's go for some grand celebration, shall we? Actually, I have a date now. Why don't you take Naomi with you? Then she just left us there, cheeky Jane. I'm so relieved you're okay, Naomi. Because if anything happens to you... Yeah, Augustine? If anything happens, I would die for you. Hello, hallway. Hello, classmates. I, Taya, have finally returned to school after three months. What the what? What's with everyone's goggled-eyed looks? The boys were all slipping off their chairs. Had I morphed into Jenna Ortega at the summer break or something? Oh, turns out there's a new girl standing behind me. Are you the new student? Let me show you around. Oh, boys, aren't they forgetting something? Their existing girlfriends? Which they were only with because of me. Anyway, I'm Taya, aka Stalking Lord, ruler of all information in school. Just give me a full name and some of your allowance money, and I can dig up the 411 on your crush. These idiots only impressed their girlfriends due to my incredible talent. And now they're all over this Mira girl? <sighs> Do they have no shame? Unlike me, once I like someone, then my eyes don't wander. The one and only Adonis of my heart is Colin. He's so sweet. He has this shining halo when he plays basketball. And most importantly, he's flawlessly handsome. But I hadn't told him how I felt, because as you can see, he's not short of admirers and nothing seems to impress him. So I was still trying to figure out the best way to get on his radar. My everyday joy was quietly observing him from afar. But wait, what happened to his car? What's with all the silly scribbles? Finn the troublemaker and his minions were standing nearby laughing at my Colin. Ugh. Those notorious rebels, for some reason, seem to thrive off tormenting poor Call. So you're a vandal now, huh, Finn? Look who's talking. Oh, I see. The new team captain? Finn threw the spray can at Call, then left. Why isn't Colin doing anything? Maybe he doesn't want to rise to such petty idiots? Then let me handle this. I know exactly what his Achilles heel is. A few days later, I secretly put a small box in Finn's locker and watched on as his minions gathered around excitedly gawping at it. They too must be amazed that their big man's finally getting a love confession time, huh? Finn smugly opened the box but then freaked out and threw it in the air. The cockroaches escaped and ran rampant across the hallway. It's pure chaos. <laughs> a bunch of wimps. Oh, he finally discovered the note I attached. Finn was fuming and shouted that he would find the instigator. 
I could see Colin walk off from the crowd. If only he knew what I did for him, he'd be so impressed. But nope. Finn took zero notice of my warning and continued to bother Colin. Ugh, I can't let him get away with this. That gremlin needs to learn some serious lessons. Finn always stays late after school to sneak up to the terrace and practice skateboarding. So I schemed to get him stuck in the elevator. He'd be trapped there for at least an hour. Enough time for that claustrophobic peacebreaker to read the second warning letter and apologize for what he did. There he is. Time to leave. I ducked my head, gently stepping out of the elevator. When suddenly, Finn grabbed my wrist and pulled me back. How long are you going to play Beauty Saves the Hero, huh? How could he know? It turns out that Finn's minions happened to see a bunch of pictures of Colin decorated with hearts in my locker. And they even found a list of Finn's weaknesses in my bag. Just one cute puppy can make him scream like a little girl? Suddenly, the elevator stopped. Oh no, I didn't mean to trap myself here like this. With this punk. You did this too, right? You've gone too far. Tell you what, be my servant for a month and I'll let you off. <laughs> As if. Stay away from Colin and I'll stay away from you. You don't even know his true face. I doubt you'd still like him if you did. Anyway, I heard that the principal is desperate to get his hands on the cockroach culprit. Your choice. Do you want to pay the price to him or to me? Ugh, he's got me. But what does this Finn know about Colin that I don't? Okay, just one month. And don't think it'll be easy to be my boss. Heh, <laughs> nice. Then I have first order for you already. And so, I had to sing and dance to entertain him until someone came to rescue us. In the following days, the bossy Finn kept sending me on dumb errands and rebuking me for every single thing. Hmm. There's no denying that this guy was a gifted painter. It's just a shame about his lousy personality. As soon as someone spotted us, he immediately skated away, leaving me running after him. He didn't study either, so I had to do all his homework. He even made me run around the school just to buy him some snacks. This time, Finn asked me to put this cake on Miss Watterson's desk. Did he finally do something nice? No! How foolish I was! Turns out he'd injected food coloring into it to prank our teacher, and he took a video of me placing it on her desk to slander me. You have to stay after school and film me every skateboarding session, or else I'll tell her. That guy has gone too far. Is he forcing me to work over time now? And since I have been busy being Finn's puppet, I didn't even have time to look after Colin anymore. I've tried several times asking why he hates Colin that much, but every time I mentioned it, he got all touchy. And there's one more thing that intrigued me. There was something up with Finn's leg. Hey, does your left leg hurt? It's perfectly fine. Don't act like we're close. Why do you have to be so sensitive? No wonder no one likes you. Oh, please. Being liked by someone like you would be a nightmare. The only girl on my level in this place is Mira. She's sweet and gentle. Besides, she's only been here five minutes and she has already established an art club. <laughs> he can't compare the Little Mermaid to Princess Merida. We're basically just different. Heard you're the one who knows everything at school, right? Find out about her for me. It might be our last mission. For what? Are you going to put her in trouble too? <laughs> well, this proves that a know-it-all like you doesn't know anything about me. It's just like you don't understand your Colin at all. Just give this to Mira. Remember to do it in a private place so she doesn't feel awkward. Oh, he even drew the card himself. This side of rebellious Finn really surprised me. But come to think of it, if Finn was too busy with love, he wouldn't torture me anymore. Under Finn's instructions, I went to school early the next day to find his muse. As soon as I saw Mira, I immediately chased after her, but was she talking to Colin? Why did they look so sneaky? I don't get it. Why do you want to hide this? I've just transferred here. I don't want your harem bothering me. So in front of others, just pretend we're strangers, okay? Huh, fine. See you after school then. I'll pick you up. Okay, see ya honey bun. What was that? Are they dating? This isn't good news at all. Right at that moment, Finn came to ask me, Why haven't you passed her the card? What happened? Then I told Finn what I just saw. Colin offered to pick her up after school, then Mira even called him Honey Bun. Looks like my first love has ended before it had even began. But they don't even have the guts to make it public? Colin doesn't deserve Mira. But that's okay. I've got a plan. 
So according to his scheme, basically, we needed to separate them. Then I'd take Colin, and Finn would take Mira. That day after school, I assisted Finn in flattening Colin's tires. I know, I hated causing trouble for my beloved Colin. But this is the only way to give Finn an opening to offer Mira a ride because she was in a hurry to get to her ballet class. The day after, Finn helped me draw Colin as a partner for my chemistry project. During class, I was super excited and nervous when sitting next to my Adonis. Until I noticed Colin writing something to Mira and leaving it on her lab table. I immediately dragged Finn to steal the letter. Don't forget, today we have to pick Tommy up. And mom asked what you wanted for dinner. Was their relationship progressing this fast? Colin had already introduced Mira to his family. We couldn't let the two just simply meet up like that. So we stalked and followed them to a preschool. Upon catching sight of them with a the little boy, Finn suddenly blurted. What? Don't tell me that boy's their son. No, it's just Colin's little brother. Tommy, age 5.5. Favorite color? Green. Favorite food? Ice cream. Anyway, my eyes itch seeing them happy with each other. Let's sabotage them. So, we kidnapped the kid. Oh, it's not as bad as you think. We just took him for ice cream without telling Colin and Mira. That kid doesn't look worried at all. Why be worried? You saved me from those boring two. So, tell me, do you know that Mira is having dinner with your family tonight? Um, yeah. Mira, she stays at our house every day. What? what? Another chocolate ice cream, please, then I'll talk. I gave him a new cup of ice cream right away. This kid was smart. Well, she stays with us because she's our cousin. What? what? Why did she call Colin Honey Bun then? Maybe because mom calls him by this embarrassing nickname all the time. Right at that moment, Mira rushed into the ice cream shop in panic. So you guys are cousins? Why hide it from everyone? It's because she's afraid people will find out that her parents are bankrupts. No, that's not true. Don't listen to that kid. Yes, it is. I heard you telling Colin all about it. Okay, that's the reason. But please, don't tell anyone about this. I quickly said that we would agree if Mira went on a date with Finn. The guy looked shocked. Didn't think I could be so quick-witted, huh? Surprisingly, Mira smiled and said she didn't mind going on a date with Finn anyway. She always thought he's kind of cute. Huh, so everything is just that easy? <laughs> that means my servant life will finally end here. Only then did Colin rush over. Tommy, why are you here? Oh, I just got lost so they saw me and bought ice cream to calm me down. They didn't kidnap me at all. Oh, Tommy. So that's how Mira and Finn got their first date. The deal between me and Finn is considered to be over then. But why do I feel so empty instead of relieved? Suddenly, something hit my leg. Aren't you supposed to be on a date? I knew my servant would still be waiting for the boss right here. Turns out, their date was a bit… odd. Mira didn't seem to like Finn's antics. And Mira's neediness wound Finn up. So this is definitely their last date. I laughed out loud, but Finn quickly stopped me. How about you and Colin? Still don't have the guts to confess? I may have successfully protected my Adonis, but I don't know why. It's like there's something that keeps holding me back from confessing. Finn immediately took me to get a makeover. He's a very enthusiastic consultant and seems to be very knowledgeable about Colin's tastes. When seeing me in the new dress, he even said I looked cute. Okay, where had rude Finn gone? What do you think of me and Colin becoming a couple? What do you mean? I mean, you used to say that Colin was terrible and all, but now you're willing to help us get together. Actually, he's not that bad, and I'm doing this for you. You like him, right? Yeah, I like Colin, right? Hmm, why did my feelings seem vague? What had gone into my head? The next day at school, when I appeared in front of Colin with my new look, he seemed impressed. And you know what? He even suggested going on a date with me. Um, yay! But I'm not sure I could last a whole date in this tight dress and super inconvenient high heels. During our date, Colin was just as sweet and caring as I expected him to be. But weirdly, it didn't move me at all. <laughs> Is it cause I'm too focused on keeping balance on this stupid high heels? Taya, do you want to be my prom date? If he'd asked me this a month ago, I would have leaped in joy and sung out yes. But right now, I just stood there, silent. <sighs> I see. I really like this version of you, but your previous look might suit you better. 
You seem more comfortable and carefree around Finn. Oh, Finn. I didn't realize he has always been on my mind till now. I'd long to be free of him, but now he's all I could seem to think about. Curious, I asked Colin why Finn didn't like him, and I finally found out the truth. Turns out, they used to be friends and were once on the basketball team together. Finn was the best player back then, but at one practice, he was doing a high jump when Colin also jumped to get the ball. They collided and Finn injured his knee, which ended his professional basketball dreams. Colin then became the star player. Meanwhile, Finn turned rebellious and had resented Colin ever since. Feeling guilty still, Colin was willing to suffer all the tormenting Finn had done to him. That's why Finn always caused you trouble. He still got me a makeover though, to match your style and become a thing with you. Oh, that explains why you seem to be exactly my type. He knows me too well. But, Taya, you like Finn, right? If so, you should go and tell him. That hit me hard. Maybe I've been trying to deny it the whole time, but I really did feel the most comfortable around Finn and I miss hanging out with him. But he seems to like someone soft and girly, like Mira. Guess you're gonna find it out for yourself. So, I gathered all my courage and came to the skate park to find Finn. He saw me from afar. Hey, how was your date? You looked the part. I didn't expect you to be back this early. I know about the secret between you and Colin, and how you lost your opportunity of becoming a professional basketball player. If my bestie hates him, I hate him too. Actually, I don't hate him. I just hate how useless I am. Don't talk about yourself like that. You know that you're really talented, right? You're the first guy I've met who can skate, paint, and well, is good looking at the same time. Be more confident, will you? You know, no one's ever seen nice things like that in me before. But this doesn't matter, because you like Colin. I did like Colin, but we realized we're not actually a very good match. After an awkward silence, we both raised our voices at the same time. I you know, think- Oh, you, you go, go first. first. I'm listening. I think I like you. Um, well, that was what I was about to say. Let me be your servant this time. Dad! Where have you been? I, I was so worried. Go away. Don't touch me. I froze on the spot, not understanding why my once kind-hearted father was being so cold toward me. I snapped out of my daze and tried helping him forward, but he flinched me away. My eyes started to tear up, I, and I didn't know what to do. Then another woman appeared. She quickly helped him up and smiled at me. Don't worry, sweetie. I'll take care of him. Excuse me? Who was she? My mother had barely been put in the ground, and dad had already moved on? I couldn't watch any more of this, so I quickly left the room. How could things go downhill this quickly? My life used to be so simple and perfect. I had a loving family. I was always on top at school. People always complimented me on how I inherited both the beauty and intelligence of my mom and dad. But then a traffic accident happened and took mom away from us. Ever since then, my polite, well-mannered, loving dad changed into a cruel, bitter drunk who seemed to despise me. Ugh. The next day, I arrived home from school with the worry about what state my dad would be in. But, huh? Why was Uncle Alfred on my doorstep? I invited him inside, and there was dad, slumped on the couch, surrounded by empty beer cans. As soon as he saw us, he slurred out and started throwing the cans at us. Uncle Alfred then took me to dinner so we could have a talk, and I couldn't help the tears as I blurted out how bad things were at home. He patted my arm and said, Your father's been through a lot. I think it's best if we give him time to sort himself out. I think you should come live with us for a while. So that's how I ended up living with Uncle Alfred, Aunt Madeline, and my cousin Charity. At first, everything seemed fine. As bad as it sounds, it was a relief to be away from Dad and to be able to properly process my thoughts for once. I was so grateful to Uncle Alfred for giving me a second home. But then he went away on a business trip, and everything changed. I was walking back to my room when Charity appeared in her doorway and tripped me up. As I stumbled and landed on my hands and knees, she snorted out, Yes, that's right. Bow down to your queen, you hideous peasant. You should know your place in this house. Ugh, that girl was such a pain. Since her dad went away, she wouldn't quit tormenting me. It's ironic that her name is Charity, but she doesn't seem kind at all. I'd had enough of her cruel jibes. This had just got personal. So I angrily replied, I know you're just jealous of me because your grades suck and you're not as pretty. Charity's eyes welled up. 
Then she shoved past me and ran to her mom. I followed up to her and explained what happened to my Aunt Madeline. She frowned at Charity, then scolded her. Phew. Fortunately, I had Aunt Madeline on my side. Anyway, justice is served, right? Wrong. As it wasn't long before my aunt's attitude changed toward me, too. One time, I was helping my aunt cook a casserole when the doorbell rang. It turned out to be an old friend of my aunt. As soon as she saw me, she happily said, Wow! It's only been a few years, but Charity sure has grown up. The older she gets, the more she looks like Alfred, doesn't she? Look at her eyes and smile. I stared at Aunt Madeline in confusion and saw her mood immediately shift. That night when I brought the casserole dish out, Aunt Madeline took one bite then spat it into a napkin. You're clumsy, thoughtless, and now an awful cook? Be a bit more useful, will you? I stared at her open-mouthed. Unable to find the words to say, then Charity piped in, Please, never make this again. Casserole is so gross. Just like you. Then she smirked at me as she dumped the entire plate into the trash. Weird. Didn't Aunt Madeline tell me to cook this because it was Charity's favorite? Ugh, it seemed like life in this house wasn't going to get any easier. Over the next week, their mocking and snide comments continued. One day I styled my hair in a different way, and Charity sniggered at me. What's that? It looks like you got a lobster on your head. <laughs> Have you ever considered dyeing your hair, by the way? Because blonde really doesn't suit you. On another occasion, I was invited to a party, so I put on this cute dress. But when I walked downstairs in it, they both stared at me. My aunt said, Oh, dear. Is that piece of rag making you look even chubbier than usual? Or is it because you've been so well-fed living with us? Another time, I was sitting at the breakfast table, dabbing lip gloss onto my lips, when Charity yanked it off me. As I tried to grab it back, she sniggered out, What for? Putting this on your gross lips just makes you look desperate. No one wants to kiss you anyway. Gosh, my patience with this girl was wearing very thin. Worse still, Aunt Madeline overheard the whole thing, but she just laughed. I didn't understand why they were being like this. I knew I wasn't ugly or fat, and far from it. I know I'm pretty, as I was always complimented on my glossy long hair. Well, until I moved here, anyway. This was so confusing. Why were they jealous of me? It turns out that being too beautiful was not easy. Ugh. Things got trickier when my dad, who's also the school principal, returned to work after his time off. He totally ignored me, and it made me feel terrible. <sighs> Then I arrived home from school to Aunt Madeline fussing over me and asking if I wanted anything to eat. Huh? What? Oh, I see. Uncle Alfred was back from his work trip. Ugh. It was time I exposed this mother-daughter duo's fake act once and for all. So that evening, I volunteered to cook. Yep, you guessed it. I made the casserole dish. As I brought it out, Charity accidentally shouted, Ew! I already told you I hate this dish. Aunt Madeline turned pale, and Charity gave this gawping, shocked look. Then I dropped to my knees and pleaded, I know I'm wrong. Please don't punish me anymore. I don't want to sleep in the basement again. Uncle Alfred looked very confused, so I continued. I forgot that Charity hates this dish. I've been punished several times, but I still keep on messing up. I'm, I'm the one to blame. What is this? I go away for a few weeks and come back to carnage? He ordered Aunt Madeline into their room for a private chat. We're not even related. Don't expect my mother and I to be nice to you, she said, then stormed off. What? What did Charity mean? Of course we were related. Aunt Madeline was my dad's sister, right? I wanted to know what was going on, so I hid behind the door and listened in on their conversation. Tell me the truth. Teresa is your child with Claire, isn't she? I was taken aback. Claire? My mother? Had I misheard her? I know. Mark told me. The day Claire had the accident, they ran some blood tests, and he found out Teresa's blood type didn't match his. Obviously, she's not his biological daughter. And she looks just like you. Now tell me, did you and Claire cheat behind our backs? You used to be in love with her before you married me. So Dad treated me like that because he found out I'm not his own daughter? And Alfred and my mom used to be in love bef before she got married to my dad? Explain to me! Enough! Alfred finally spoke up. I have nothing to explain to you. Hearing footsteps toward me, I rushed to my room, 
closed the door, then crawled into my blanket, pretending to be asleep. Suddenly, I heard the door open. It was Alfred. Teresa, let's get out of here. I packed a bag and left with my Uncle Alfred. We moved into a small apartment not too far from his house. Even though he took care of me a lot, he never mentioned that day ever again. I didn't dare to ask either. So we just let it slide. He had to be my real dad, right? He just wasn't ready to talk about it yet. I tried to avoid charity as much as possible, but this wasn't always easy as we went to the same school. It wasn't like I was scared of her or anything. It was just awkward. Then one day, I walked along the corridor to see flyers stuck to lockers, doors, windows, and floating around the floor. They all had a picture of my face on them, and scrawled across them was, This fraud is the product of her cheating mom and a married man. Everyone was giving me dirty looks and whispering about me. I panicked and rushed out of there, but I wasn't looking where I was going and bumped straight into a jock, and standing next to him was Charity. Enjoy the fame! These flyers were specially made for you. Right at that moment, my father appeared holding a flyer. He waved it in front of her. What is this? Who allows you to trash the school with this rubbish? Leave Teresa alone. I couldn't cope with my father right now, so I ran off to class. That afternoon, I heard the school speaker announce that everything written on the flyers was lies and Charity would be in detention. Once the last bell rang, I just wanted to get home and hide away from the world. But as I walked outside, I saw my dad waiting for me at the gate. I had nothing to say to him. So I ignored him and walked off. Please, Teresa, at least hear me out. I stopped on the spot, then walked over to him. I guess it was time I found out the truth. So, turns out, yes, I'm not his daughter. But I wasn't Uncle Alfred's daughter either. I found this, and it made me feel so guilty, he said. He showed me an artificial insemination certificate file. Turns out after years of trying, my parents went to run some tests, and my dad was diagnosed as infertile. Mom didn't want him to be upset, so she secretly got artificial insemination and gave birth to me. It was never your mom's fault, and I was wrong to treat you like that. I'm, I'm so sorry. A fresh ran of tears streamed down my face with each word I heard from him. Teresa, I'm so sorry that us adults selfishness and bitterness has hurt you. Startled, I turned around to find that Uncle Alfred was already there behind me. I guess he'd come to pick me up, and I didn't notice since I was talking to my dad. He must have heard the whole story. Alfred and I will do anything to make it up to you. Even if you want to find your biological dad, we'll try our best. I looked at him and Uncle Alfred, thinking, there's no need to, as I've already got two amazing dads. Hey Beans, welcome back to my channel. I'm so cranked to introduce today's special guest, my daughter Elle. Say hi, sweetie. Hi, we're making butter from scratch today. I'm so excited. Elle, can you please do this properly? Mom, it's the sixth take already. I can't even film my arms anymore. If you're still not satisfied, then film it yourself. Hey, I'm Elle, a high school student living in Wisconsin with my mom. From the outside, there's nothing out of the ordinary about us. Well, except that my mom's a vintage-holic. See, she in fact became a famous YouTuber for her 1950s lifestyle. Living like this was such a hassle, but that's what puts food on our table, so I had to put up with it. However, sometimes mom even insisted that I join in her videos, like today. Ugh, not just that. Whenever we went out together, she made me wear the cheesiest vintage dresses so I wouldn't ruin her aesthetic. As a hip hop dancer, it was torture. See, I sure look way better in these clothes. Oh dear, what are those awful threads? Here, try this, it's really the bee's knees. Bee's knees, she said, more like granny. Ah, so pretty. Auntie, you have such excellent taste. That's Daisy, my cousin, and also schoolmate. Who gets along much better with my mom? Jeez, I can't let this hideous dress go home with us. If you like this so much, why don't you just take it instead, Daisy? Mom then walked to the counter with some more tacky clothes, ready to pay, but... Gee, where did I put it? <sighs> Guess I'll come back another time. Oh, missing something, Mommy? It's okay, Mrs. Faye. You're a regular, so you can pay us next time. Wait, what? No! 
So now I had to wear this ugly dress to the boring event mom was dragging me to. Because the more the merrier. On the way there, mom was talking a blue steak about how I should behave at the bash. When suddenly, huh? What now? Awesome! This must be the third time this hunk of junk has broken down this month! Isn't it fantastic? And we don't even have phones to call for help! Elle, I've told you, it'd be ridiculous to show up with smartphones while dressing like this. Besides, people used to live just fine without them. Stop relying on them so much. Trust me, some nobleman will soon come to our rescue. Stay here and wait all you want. I'm gonna go look for a garage. But I only managed a couple of steps before a fancy car pulled over, and an old man in a suit stepped out and offered to help. Turns out he's one of Mom's subscribers and even asked for a picture. Thank you so much for saving my chariot. You're the ginchiest. Gosh, here she goes again with her old-timey slangs. Eventually, we reached this Anceville, and as soon as we arrived, Mom immediately ran to her celeb friends and posed for photos, leaving me lost and confused. While I was trying to navigate through this madness, some whispering caught my attention. Isn't that Faye? She's so extra! I can't even get past the first five minutes of her videos! Oh yeah? And still, Mom thought the whole world was her fan. I don't get why she wanted to be here with these fake people that much! I was not having any of that stuffy place, so I went outside to get some air. As I wandered along the street, I spotted a group of teenagers dancing to old school hip hop! This is right up my alley! But wait! Ugh, this stupid dress! My jam is coming on though! So, letting my adrenaline take over, I joined the crowd. Everyone seemed impressed and even made room for me to shine. Then one of them joined me. I was really feeling it when a familiar screeching voice startled me. L, what on earth are you doing? Agitate the gravel now! Then mom dragged me to the car and drove me straight home. Gringles, do you understand that if anyone sees you like that, the perfect image I've built all these years will be in ruins? Then don't drag me into these things, do it alone! Mind your manners! You should find something more practical rather than dancing like those good-for-nothing lazy bums! I'd had enough. Furious, I stormed into my room and stayed there all night. The next morning, I woke up to the rumbling sound of an empty stomach. When the coast was clear, I went downstairs to check the fridge for food. Ew, what's that rotten egg smell? Jesus, this fridge must be from Napoleon times! I reluctantly went for an instant soup, but the microwave wouldn't even heat it up. And guess what? My mom spent over $500 just for this thing's useless 50s look. Then I decided to put on a movie to blow off some steam. But the ancient TV wouldn't turn on either. Unbelievable! Is there anything in this rusty dollhouse that actually works? I need to get out of here before going insane. Oh, there's a new family moving in next door. Hang on, isn't that the guy I was dancing with last night? He smiled and waved at me, but I could only force a smile and nodded back. Hey, why the long face? If you're bored, come give me a hand. Then he dragged me over to his yard before I could reply. Once we're done, we rested on the front porch. Turns out his name was Royce. He'd just moved in with his dad and had enrolled at my school. I have to admit, he's quite the charmer. And within minutes, I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my unconventional life with mom. My mom has way too much free time. I wish she'd find a man. Only then she might quit nagging me. And meanwhile, my dad is always busy. If he had someone by his side, he'd want to spend more time with his family and be less of a workaholic. Wait a minute. So, how about we make them... A, a couple. couple! Today is the day. Our parents have really tight schedules, so planning out this date took a lot of effort. But so far, so good. I told my mom to check out this vintage-themed restaurant in town while Royce told his dad that he wanted some father-son bonding time. Then, oops, we accidentally bump into each other and join tables. Look at my mom, gracefully fixing her hair and acting all charming. <laughs> I winked at Royce and then we made an excuse to leave the table so the adults could have some private time. It's been a little while, let's see how the two are doing. Goodness gracious, was Mr. Phillips slurping on the spaghetti? He's making a mess and mom seemed really embarrassed. We immediately rushed inside to save this date before it's too late. At the end of the evening, we thought the worst was behind us. Mr. Phillips walked out without holding the door open for mom, making it swing back in her face. Gosh, every beginning is difficult, I guess. 
<sighs> Over the next few days, Royce and I beat our brains out to try and find a way to save their budding relationship, and came down to this. Mom, I twisted my ankle during practice. Can you please pick me up? Hey, Dad, I forgot my wallet at the practice room. Could you pick it up on the way home? Then we waited until our parents showed up and went inside to lock the door and even turn off the lights for dramatic effect. I immediately heard my mom's horrified scream. Then the room went quiet. I bet Mr. Phillips calmed her down. We waited a few minutes before calling the security guard to open the door. But contrary to our expectations, the one being hysterical was... Mr. Phillips, who was now <laughs> sobbing in my mother's arms. Wait, what? Turns out Royce forgot that his dad, who always sleeps with a light on, is in fact nyctophobic. There goes plan B. This was bad. Everything kept going south and the clock was ticking as Royce's dad had to leave for another business trip soon. We can't accept defeat like this. There must be something your dad's really good at, right? I don't know, he's good at fixing stuff. Ha! <laughs> then we know what to do next. While mom was taking a shower, I waited for my plan to set in motion. Three, two, one. Ah! Elle, help me! I ran over to her to see water shooting out from a broken faucet. After a couple of minutes of struggle, I called Royce's house for help, aka Mr. Phillips. As soon as he arrived, he went straight into the bathroom and helped mom out of that pool. He looked way too cool, just like Superman. Now, time for his forte to speak up. As expected, he fixed it all in a blink, and mom even invited the two of them to stay for dinner as a thank you. Great! During dinner, Mr. Phillips kept praising my mom's cooking. He admitted that this coziness reminded him of the good old days. Seeing things escalate between them, Royce and I finished quickly and excused ourselves to give them some time alone. My dad's right. I can't remember the last time we sat together as a family. Then he told me that his parents divorced a few years back, and due to his dad's work, they were always moving from place to place, which really wore him out. Seeing his sad gaze made me feel so bad for him. I just wanted to give him a hug. Hold on. What nonsense was I thinking? I immediately brushed off that weird thought, and we chatted until late. The next day at school, I was talking to Royce as usual, when suddenly our conversation was interrupted. Oh my god, aren't you the new guy? How do you know him? Huh? Where did Daisy come from? And is befriending Royce something strange? Then she whispered to me that Royce's good looks hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. Wow, no wonder I kept feeling like we were being watched whenever we hung out at school. Daisy then proceeded to chime in between us and talk to Royce non-stop, even on our way home, when clearly her house was not in the same direction as ours. How annoying! But good news, back at home, mom seemed to be floating on air. I caught her humming along to love songs and she didn't nag me at all when I went to dance practice. Royce also said that his dad had been in a great mood too. Sparks were definitely flying between them. Our plan finally worked. Good job, sis. Uh huh? Was I really gonna be his stepsister? I should be happy with this outcome, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? One day at practice, I walked in on Daisy and Royce and immediately felt awkward, so I just rolled myself into a corner. Why did I react that way seeing them be so close? Is it possible that I've fallen for him? This can't be. We're gonna be family. There's no way this can happen. After that day, I tried to avoid Royce. Despite his new girl, he still bothered me, but I kept my distance. I was brooding all the way home until I heard my mom talking on the phone as I entered the house. And I'll bake you some pecan pie, darling. Wait a minute, Royce and his dad were both allergic to pecan, so who's she being all lovey-dovey with? The next day, as usual, I told my mom I'd go to practice, but actually lingered outside the house to stalk on mom. I saw her on the couch, video calling some strange man. Oh gosh, did my mom really cheat on Royce's dad? How could she? Still in shock, I glumly lurked to Graffiti Alley and spotted Royce and Daisy there. They seem to be talking about something really serious. So, you already knew? Yeah, ages ago. But it's clear that we can't just force love on someone. So, you mean to just give up and happily watch them see other people? Oh no, so the new mom was unfaithful to Mr. Phillips already? How embarrassing. Right at that moment, Daisy spotted me, so I frantically ran away. After school the following day, Daisy wanted to talk with me in private. However, it was not about what happened yesterday. Do me a favor and stop hovering around Royce all the time, will you? 
but Royce is my friend. I can't just stop seeing him because you said so. If you like him, be my guest. Suddenly, Daisy fell to the ground. Ouch, why did you push me? Huh? What is she doing? At that exact moment, Royce showed up and worriedly checked on her. Okay, now I know what's going on. Sorry about that. Let me give you a hand. When she was just about to stand up, I shoved her. Now you know what my real push feels like. I noticed Roy's stunned look, but just walked off. Now that I don't seem so great in his eyes anymore, he'll stop approaching me. Sweetie, what's wrong? What's wrong? This is all your fault! If you didn't cheat on Mr. Phillips, everything would be fine! What do you mean? Cheating on whom? <laughs> then my mom burst out laughing after I told her. Turns out they never dated. They both saw through our matchmaking plan early on, but decided to just be good friends. And the person I saw mom video calling with was her boyfriend. But she hadn't introduced him yet because they'd only started dating. But why set us up in the first place? Finally, I had the chance to tell her how I truly felt about being forced into her vintage world and not being able to pursue my love for street dancing. Mom was quiet for a second and then said, Gee, how silly I've been. I've been inspiring strangers to go after their dreams, but I stopped my own daughter from pursuing hers. I felt so much better after pouring my heart out. I also mentioned Royce's situation with his dad, and she promised to talk to him about it. Hang on. This means... Mom, so you and Mr. Phillips are just friends, right? Immediately, I ran off to find Royce. As if on cue, the doorbell rang, and it was... Daisy! What game is she playing now? If she's here to mess around, come at me already. But surprisingly, Daisy apologized. I'm sorry, I was just blinded by jealousy. And there was nothing going on between me and Royce. He in fact already rejected me the day you saw us at the graffiti alley. Also, he asked me to give you this. I opened the box to see an adorable keychain with I love you on it. Oh my, is, is this a love confession? But there's also a note saying, I'm leaving for another city, till we meet again. No, no, no! I sprinted to his house right away. Oh lord, he's already packing! Without thinking, I hugged him and started sobbing. So, you read my message? Y yeah And what do you think? I- I feel the same, but you're leaving for real? Then, his smile turned playful, and he admitted he was just messing with me. Turns out he was going away, but only for a few days, for a dance competition. Really? That's awesome! But I can't forgive you for tricking me yet. So, yeah. Although we couldn't get our parents together, us two actually became a couple, so our matchmaking scheme isn't a total failure, right? <laughs> we were even able to change a few things for the better. For instance, Mom spoke to Royce's dad, and he agreed not to move for the time being so his son could settle in. Mom also promised to check in on him when his dad's away on business. As for our family, my mom no longer tried so hard to act like she's not living in 2023. She now sometimes includes modern elements in her vlogs as well, and I even become a regular <laughs> guest on her channel. Hey Beans, today my fiancé and I are baking this fab coconut cake, along with my daughter and our boyfriend. They are hip-hop dancers! Check out their channel if that's something you fancy! They're really the cat's pajamas! Hey! What's with the long face? Oh, hey, it, it's nothing, just a bad day. You know, you can tell me everything, right? I'm your best friend, so I know when something is up with you. Spit it out. Okay, you're right, as always. <laughs> I think you should hang on to something, because this is shocking news. I- Oh? My god. Who is that? He looks so gorgeous. Sue, are you even listening? Huh? What did you just say? I turned to him, but- he mumbled out typical, then walked away. Jeez, what's his problem? Oh, that was Lucas earlier. My best friend since kindergarten. Don't mind him, he's always like this. But whatever, let's get back to this handsome guy. So it turns out his name is Alex, and he's new here. I knew it, because such a pretty boy like him would never go unnoticed by me. The next morning, I couldn't wait to walk to school with Lucas. I had some amazing news to tell him. It happened to me the night before, during my shift at the diner. Lucas, you won't believe who was in the diner yesterday. Robert Downey Jr.? What? No, it was Alex, the new student. 
gosh, Lucas, you've got to help me get his attention. You're on the baseball team together, right? Huh? Do you like that guy? Seriously? Duh. I mean, look at him. He's like Timothy Chalamet's twin brother. So will you help me, please? Ugh, fine. Hmm. I did hear him say he likes girls on roller skates. I have an idea. The next time he comes to the diner, serve him on skates. It's a sure way to impress him. Oh, yes, that's a great idea. I hugged Lucas to thank him. So the next time Alex came into the diner, I took out my roller skates and was ready to serve him his spaghetti. I'm kind of a novice on skates, so I slowly slid over to him. So far, so good. Until I didn't see that somebody had spilled their milkshake all over the floor. And yes, of course, I slipped. Oh, no. I quickly covered my head to avoid the spaghetti plate, but... Huh? The plate had fallen on the floor, but where was the spaghetti? I looked around. Oh, snap. I found it. It landed on Alex's head. It was so humiliating. But worse still, as hard as I tried, I couldn't get back on my feet. Ugh, stupid skates. I repeatedly apologized to him. At first, Alex looked totally shocked. Then... Perhaps because of my pathetic look, he couldn't hold it in anymore and burst out laughing. <laughs> well, at least you dare to slide on them. I, on the other hand, am not a big fan of those. <laughs> what? What did he mean by that? Ugh, Lucas! The next day, I went looking for Lucas to confront him. He was easy to find, as he was in his favorite place to browse in town, the sneaker store. Why did you tell me Alex likes roller skates? Because he definitely doesn't. <laughs> Maybe I misheard him. Oh, wait, he likes girls in superhero costumes. That's right. What? That sounds ridiculous. Forget it, I'm not listening to you anymore. Go give your advice to some other poor girl, not me. What's up with Lucas? Why would he give me such bad advice? It's like he wanted me to fail. But why? Oh my goodness. Was he, maybe, into me? Nah. <laughs> Nonsense. Still, I had a feeling about it. So I decided to avoid Lucas as much as possible. I came up with loads of excuses not to hang out with him, such as mom was driving me to school and I was skipping lunch because I was on a diet. Ugh, it was so exhausting. I mean, have you ever tried sneakily eating your lunch in class so you don't pass out from hunger? However, this was necessary, as we both needed some space. It's the only way to keep our friendship safe. But then one day... Lucas messaged me. Can we talk after school? I have something important to tell you. Oh no. Was he going to confess his feelings? But if he did it, our friendship would be ruined. I couldn't let that happen, so I didn't meet him. Instead, I ran straight home. He called me a bunch of times, but I ignored them all. I ghosted him, to be exact. Jeez, I wasn't proud, but I had to save our friendship from stupid Cupid. But then the next time I saw him... He only gave me a hurt look, then purposely walked off in the other direction. Oh, no. Now it was basically like a cold war between us. Ugh. We might not have been hanging out with each other, but I was still keeping an eye on Lucas. I'd been watching him for a couple of days, and it looked like he was having a tough time. He must have figured out my rejection, so now he was miserable. Oh, dear Lucas, I didn't want this to happen, but I can't risk losing our friendship. But then I noticed something. One time, the whole school went on a picnic trip. I watched Lucas from afar and noticed that he was giving dagger looks to a bunch of girls. Hmm, hang on. They were surrounding Alex. I even saw him trip another girl up who was going to join the group of girls adoring Alex. And then he made out it was an accident. Another time, I overheard him telling girls from other classes who were standing by the class door trying to get a glimpse of Alex that he pretended to be all cold and quiet because he had hideous teeth, which of course wasn't true because he had a smile that could light up a room. Ah, uh, looks like it wasn't just me. Lucas didn't want any other girls going near Alex. Did he hate Alex that much? Or, or he likes Alex? For heaven's sake! Stop thinking such nonsense, Sue. Your head was messing with you. Then one day, my mom heard that Lucas's mom was sick. So she made some chicken soup and told me to bring it over to his mom. I didn't want to go around there. I mean, what if I saw Lucas? Awkward. But 
Who was I to deny a sick lady soup? When I arrived, I opened the door and let myself in as I usually do. And that's when I heard the conversation between Lucas and his mom. Lucas, do you need to forget about Alex? I want to, but I can't, mom. He's always on my mind. <sighs> anyway, the important thing is your health. You need to eat something. Look at you, you're not getting any better. How can I eat after your dad left us? It's like all this time I've been living in a lie. I'm so sorry. Wait a moment. My Sherlock Holmes intuition was kicking in. Now everything makes sense. Why Lucas was sad for a couple of days, why I hadn't seen his dad for a while, and why his mom was suddenly sick. It's because Lucas was gay. His father probably didn't take it so well, so he left, which was really devastating for Lucas's mom. But I'm his best friend. Why didn't he tell me? Man. He hid it really well. But not only that, he also tried to sabotage me when he knew I had a crush on Alex. Well, it turns out we weren't best friends like I thought. Ugh. But no, I couldn't just ignore this. I needed to talk to Lucas to clear things up. The next day, Lucas had baseball practice. So I went to find him at the field, but he wasn't there. I asked some of his teammates, but nobody knew where he was. Hmm, where could he have gone? And that's when I saw Lucas with Alex behind the bleachers. Well, well, well. Look at them. A lovey dovey. They talked for a bit, then each of them walked away in a different direction. I watched them from a distance with my arms folded. That traitor! I was so ready to yell in Lucas's face. And that's when our eyes met. He was startled when he saw me, like he'd just been busted. Well, it was technically the correct word to describe the situation. Sue, Sue, what are you doing here? Why do you look so flustered? Come on, I know about your relationship between you and Alex, so you don't need to hide it anymore. How, how, how did you know about it? I heard you and your mom talking about it, but I don't understand. How could you do this to me? You knew that I liked Alex. I know, but I couldn't explain. I was so ashamed. You should have talked to me first, but instead you stole Alex from me. Best friends don't do that to each other. Hold on a minute. What did you just say? I stole Alex from you? What do you mean? Ugh, come on. Just stop with all this hiding and lying. I know you two are together. What? Why was he overreacting like this? Was what I just said not true? Well, turns out it wasn't. I was totally wrong. Just one thing was for sure. My detective intuition sucked. And that's when Lucas told me the truth. Lucas and Alex weren't in love. Lucas even hated Alex because he's Lucas's half-brother. Oh my. It's like I got lost in a telenovela or something. When my mom was pregnant with me, my dad got drunk and made a big mistake with a colleague of his. She fell pregnant with Alex, but my dad didn't know about it. Then a month ago... Alex's mom was diagnosed with a serious illness. She didn't want him to end up alone if she couldn't make it. So she showed up in dad's life again and messed everything up. Oh my god. So that's why Lucas's mom all of a sudden got so skinny and sick. And Lucas's dad didn't leave them. No, it's because his mom kicked his dad out of the house. I wanted to tell you in the canteen the other day, but you were too starry-eyed over Alex to listen. This made me mad, so I tried everything to prevent you from getting close to him. My family's broken because of him, so I don't want my best friend to fall for someone like that. Oh, it turns out I'm a really bad friend. My best friend had problems at home, and I didn't even know it. No, because I was busy daydreaming about a guy I barely knew. I apologized to Lucas and promised that I would pay more attention to him. And then we hugged. On the plus side... At least none of my crazy theories were true. <laughs> so it turns out it was all just one big misunderstanding. The Cold War between us ended and our friendship remains as amazing as ever. I also managed to convince Lucas and Alex to give each other a chance. After all, they're half-brothers. And what happened between their parents wasn't their fault. Besides, Alex's mom is seriously ill, so he needs Lucas more than ever. It's great hanging out with them both and seeing them laughing and joking about. Ah, peace at last. The three of us have become pretty great friends. Oh, do you want to hear something funny? Lucas actually offered to match make me with Alex. <laughs> but it's okay. I refused. Why, you ask? Well, the three of us are such awesome friends now, and I don't want anything to ruin that. Pretty mature of me, right? <laughs> it's finally the first day at the aquarium. And to say I'm nervous is an understatement. Stay calm, you can do this. <sighs> You're Ariel, not Naira. I'm headstrong, spirited, and... Okay, let's get into character. 
Bright smile, check. Friendly manner, check. Ariel's accent, check. I was a dazzling mermaid and even let the little kids stick their stickers on my fishtail while I answered a bazillion questions about Atlantica and my Prince Eric. The last visitor was the sweetest little girl who handed me a collectible box of cutlery as a gift. Oh my, such a lovely comb, but it looks rare. Are you sure your guardians would agree to this? Of course, my brother always says yes to me. The little girl signaled someone in the crowd to come over and it was Arson? As in the cutest boy from school? Naira, oh my god, your take on Ariel is spot on. I didn't know there was a side of you. I... What are you talking about? I know not of this Naira. Feeling the panic rise in me, I lifted my fishtail costume and ran with my two feet as all the kids stared in shock. I'd never wanted to disappoint those kids, but I had the biggest crush on Arson, and no way had I expected him to be there and see me like this. <sighs> At school, I was a loser, a nobody. Yet, when I was acting, I felt invincible. At least, I did until my timid, introverted side got in the way of my performing dreams. That day, our drama club mentor announced our school play this year would be Legally Blonde. I loved that movie so much, and I already knew all the lines. I couldn't let this opportunity pass me by, so when the mentor asked who wanted to audition as the lead, Elle Woods, I took all the courage and raised my hand. The whole room fell silent and suddenly burst into laughter. Oh please, how could a loser like you play the glamorous Elle Woods? Worst of all, the mentor agreed with her and said that I might be better suited for the nail lady role. And then she said the lead should go to someone who's outgoing and influential, like Eliza. What? Eliza's got the emotional range of a teaspoon. I gotta get this role. So I waited until the end of the meeting and then spoke to the mentor in private. I'm sorry, but I can't cast an Elle Woods with stage fright. Naira, I'll consider giving you the role, but only if you can prove to me that you can do this without your fear getting the better of you. So try practicing by going out in public and interacting with strangers. Get yourself comfortable in front of a crowd. Can you do that? Feeling determined, I went to look for some kind of social experiment right away. And that's why I applied for this job at the aquarium. But I never thought anyone from class would show up. Least of all, Arson. He even caught up with me at school the next day, insisting he saw me at the aquarium. And typical me, being all fidgety and shy, I blurted out, maybe you mistook me for my twin sister, Cora. Oh, in that case then, can I get her number? Or can you, like, arrange for me to go on a date with her? The way she glowed with confidence was amazing. Wow, I didn't expect him to be that into my acting. How ironic. Wait, what if I continue to play Cora and go on a date with him? I could practice my acting as this unapologetically outgoing girl while spending time with him? Tempting, right? Okay, wait at the book cafe near school on Sunday, 3 p.m. I'll tell Cora about it. I'd been preparing for this date the whole week. After watching multiple tutorials on YouTube, I was finally able to put together this bold look. All that's left to do was to wear Cora's self-confidence to match it. So I did a Bella Hadid runway strut into the cafe, straight past the gawping onlookers and over to Arson's seat and interrupted him from his reading. Hi, is that a Rick Riordan's book? Uh, yeah, Heroes of Olympus. Are you a fan of Riordan too? Are you kidding me? I've read all of his works. Yes, Breaking the Ice, success. We connected over our shared love of fantasy novels and other nerdy things. I didn't want the date to ever end, so I invited him along to a secret place of mine. I covered his eyes until we got there. Being the cute guy he was, he went along with it, even though he looked unsure about what was happening. When I turned the lights on and the ice rink appeared, his face lit up. Then the snow began to fall. It felt like a scene out of Frozen. Then we went onto the ice and... Arson fell straight onto his butt. <laughs> Stop laughing, this is my first time, okay? Aww, embarrassed Arson was so cute. <laughs> I helped him up and it was the first time our hands touched. I led him around the rink and taught him some moves. When I looked at him, I saw him looking back at me with this big grin on his face. Then suddenly he pulled me in and I fell right into his embrace. Our faces were so close and I swore we were about to kiss. Ugh. Overcome with nerves, I pushed him away and he lost his balance and fell flat on the ice. But he jumped up to his feet right away and skated after me. Oh, don't let me catch you or else. Let's see you try. <laughs> Yesterday felt like a dream. 
We texted each other non-stop up until the last class of the day, P.E. My eyes were still glued to my phone when a flying ball hit my knee. It was from Eliza. Right after that, another one came and knocked my glasses off. I shielded myself with my arms and hoped it would go away soon, and surprisingly, it did. Only, Arson was standing in front of me, blocking all the balls. Arson, what are you doing there? We were just playing around. <laughs> playing around? Can't you see you're hurting her? Then Arson turned to me and asked me if I was okay. Could this be it? Did he realize I was the girl he went on a date with? Oh, thank you for helping me out. You're my friend, and also Cora's sister, so I've got to look out for you, right? Oh, he didn't recognize me. That meant my acting was flawless, right? Then why did I feel so uneasy about it? As uncomfortable as I felt about the situation, I also liked Arson way too much to stop it. So I continued pretending to be Cora. He acted so lovey-dovey on our dates, and it made my heart melt. But at school, he only saw me as Cora's helpless, clumsy sister. He talked about her constantly, and stared blankly into space as if there were an imaginary Cora there. It started bugging me that Arson only liked the confident, fun, and spontaneous heroine I'd created. Not coy Naira. <sighs> I couldn't blame him though. Eve, I didn't find myself... lovable. Maybe that's why mom left me, and didn't bother to write or to call. I couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't feed Arson with false expectations of an unreal character. So I typed out a text to Arson telling him that Cora was on her way to study abroad for three years and that this relationship wouldn't work. Arson kept texting back, non-stop, and even came to my house to look for Cora and broke down in tears when I told him she'd already left. I felt so bad, but that was the only way for him to stop fantasizing about Cora. Over time, his pain would fade, right? From that day on, Arson always looked for me at school and consistently asked about her. This didn't go unnoticed by Eliza, who was clearly green with envy. Lunchtime came, and Eliza, along with her minions, suddenly approached me. Why so lonely? Has Arson abandoned you? <laughs> I tried to ignore her and eat my lunch, but she wouldn't leave me alone. Fine then, I'll lend you a hand. Arson, hi! Did you know that Naira here is so obsessed with you? She even admits that she loves to follow you everywhere like a stalker. How creepy! Huh? What was this girl saying? Now people were staring at me, judging me for something that wasn't even true. I was done with being Naira, the loser. If only... Yeah, if only Cora's personality helped me stand up for myself. Shut up! Me and Arson are friends, so what? Why do you have to make stuff up about me? Is it because you're jealous of me? Oh, what? Me? Jealous of you? You like Arson, don't you? I feel sorry for you, really. You're gonna pick on everyone he talks to? How pathetic. Just like that, people made disapproving comments at Eliza. She couldn't do anything other than run away in shame. While I suddenly received praise for standing up against the school's tyrant, people seemed to love this new side of me. So perhaps it was a good time to give myself a makeover. The next day at school, I started dressing up boldly and wearing contact lenses instead of nerdy glasses. My classmates seemed to like my new look. My drama club mentor changed her attitude towards me as well. I even applied for the student council and my popularity grew, and so did my friendship circle. The world opened up to me, but weirdly, being around people all the time just felt uncomfortable and exhausting. I couldn't really talk to any of them, as we weren't even close. I just felt so left out. When it came to a charity date auction, being on the council committee meant that I was appointed a bachelorette. That meant everyone joining this event would bid to take me on a date, and that bidding money would go to the school's fund to build a new cafeteria. That's how I ended up here, on stage at the auction. I tried my best to act cool to raise as much money as possible. The boys kept cheering for me, trying to show their charms, and I tried to flirt back by talking nonsense and winking at them. Once the bidding started, chaos commenced as people kept raising their paddle numbers. 40. 60. 80. It suddenly came to me that I didn't want to go on dates with any of these guys. I didn't know them at all. And just then, Arson shouted from the back. 500. 500 going once, going twice, and sold. Arson jumped on stage, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there. He led me to the garden, and then he started asking me tons of questions. What is it with you lately? It's as if you're someone else. N no way. I'm just the same old Naira. 
Tell me the truth. Are you... Cora? You switched places with your sister to protect her, right? Oh, Cora, I've missed you so much. After all this time, he was still in love with Cora. Even now when I changed myself, he still didn't see me as Naira? Arson, I... I can't. And then I just ran out of there. After a night of crying myself to sleep, I was back at school and found myself summoned to the principal's office with a smirking Eliza. There she showed the principal a video recording of my conversation with Arson last night, which was proof that someone else had been replacing me at school. If this was true, I could be expelled. Oh no, no, no! Panic! I blurted out a lie that I had bipolar and that sometimes I switched to the other persona and acted up. The principal seemed confused, but then she insisted I go to the school therapist. <sighs> I had no choice but to agree. And it was actually really good for me. Through talking to the therapist, I could finally open up about my past. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been super shy. I thought it was why my mom left me behind when she split from dad and moved out. She hadn't even contacted me once. I know a childish nerd like me would never be the one who she could really talk to. Thank God my dad came to pick me up after that. The thought of facing my so-called friends on the bus was making me nauseous. Were you that unhappy not having your mother around? I just don't know why she left me behind without a word. Was I a loser in her eyes? Honey, listen. Mom loves you. And the reason you didn't receive any letters from her was because I hid them all from you. What? Why would you do that? Because I was so broken after your mom left that I thought it would be better if you and I could forget everything about her. I... I'm sorry. Don't you know how terrible I felt about myself all those years just because of your selfishness? I ran into the house immediately. I couldn't look at him right now, only to see Mom and Cora were sitting in the living room. Both rushed towards me and pulled me in for a hug. Yeah, the Cora character wasn't entirely made up. Instead, I based her on my real life twin sister. The little five-year-old me always struck by Cora's side hid behind her dress while she boldly stood up against anyone who dared to pick on me. I'd always looked up to her. Turned out, when Dad got the call from school, he realized his actions had caused me pain, so he did everything in his power to contact Mom and brought her and Cora from LA to here. Mom kept apologizing to me, saying she regretted every minute of leaving me behind. Seeing them all break down in tears like that ached my heart, but it gave me this warm feeling at the same time. After all this time, my family feud was finally resolved. Just at that moment, the doorbell rang. It's Arson! Naira, is that your boyfriend? What? I dragged him away immediately, and this time I admitted the whole truth to him. I told him how I lied that the girl in the aquarium was Cora, because I didn't think he'd like the real me, as I wasn't a confident presence. But my feelings for him were real, and that's why I tried so hard to get close to him. But I figured now that he knew the truth, it'd be over, so I just walk away. Finally, I'm back. I've been in LA for an entire winter break to spend more time with Mom and Cora and to figure myself out. I realized that being an introvert is nothing to be self-conscious about. I'm observant, and that'll help a lot of my acting passion, right? This semester, I'll definitely try to impress my drama club mentor. No boys will ever distract me again. And that's when I spotted Arson waving at me with a huge bouquet in his hand. Arson, what are you doing here? I thought you were still mad at me. Well, I thought about it a lot, and honestly, things between us got messy, so I'd like to get to know you again. Only this time, please can it be the real you, as I really want to know what Naira's about. What do you say? Um, yeah, I'd love that. Earth to Autumn, quit staring at my lame-o brother and listen to me. I turned and looked at her. Boy. I hope I wasn't blushing. Yeah, sorry, I muttered out. She shook her head at me. Brr, it's gotten so cold. She wrapped her jacket tighter around her. Anyway, y'all excited for my sleepover this weekend? So you're still bringing your suitcase full of your cool Chicago clothes along, right? Sure, it'll be all yours. I smiled, unable to stop myself from trying to spot her brother out of the corner of my eye. And you promise you'll set up alone time for me and Seth whenever I winked at you? I confirmed. Course, 
You can count on me. Just no kissing in front of me. Yuck. So I'm Autumn, and I'm a Chicago girl now living in small town Texas. You see, after the first lockdown was lifted, we moved here so my parents could take care of my granny. Now I'm at a new school, but luckily for me, everyone seems nice. Especially this girl who sits next to me in French class, Lillian. She's never been out of Texas, so she loves hearing my stories about the Sky Deck and the Lollapalooza Festival. Better still, she has the hottest twin brother ever called Seth. He's cuter than Justin Bieber. I could just stare at him all day. <sighs> Texas is known for lots of things. Scorching hot weather, barbecues, and rodeos. But snow is not one of them. Weirdly, this winter, a snowstorm was expected. And naturally, Lillian was as excited as a little kid on the eve of her birthday. Ugh, to cold weather. I was done with it. But I could hardly turn down a sleepover when Seth would be there, could I? This was the perfect opportunity to get closer to him. I mean, no single guy could reject a girl who confesses their feelings on the first snow day. Especially not one from sunny Texas. I could be his real-life snow princess. Lillian then started rambling on about all her weekend plans. Her over-the-top anticipation was so funny. I mean, it was only snow. But I suppose for a girl who didn't even own rain boots, this was as important an occasion as Thanksgiving. I might not have been a jitterbug of excitement at the thought of seeing snow, but I was eager and albeit a little nervous to see Seth. We all would spend a weekend together in Lillian's family's holiday cottage. And no parents around. Yep, an adult-free zone. That sounds like heaven, right? That morning, Trevor and Lillian came to pick me up. Lillian was extra hyped upon seeing my massive suitcase of winter clothes that I've promised her. And she alone was able to throw it in the car's trunk with zero struggle. She must love it a lot, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. I forgot to mention Trevor. He's this nerdy boy in our class, as well as a good friend of Seth. Everyone knows he has a crush on Lillian, but it's obvious she doesn't like him. She just wanted an errand boy. So it wasn't too surprising that he would join us on this occasion, and that he would voluntarily drive Lillian, and me too, I guess, to the place. Okay, before you ask, Seth has already arrived at the cottage since he had to bring over food and prepping stuff. So... Don't worry, you'll get to meet your Prince Charming soon. Lillian playfully nudged me. I tried my best to pretend to be unfazed by her joke, but just the thought of Seth made my heart race all over again. We arrived at a beautiful wooden house just outside of town. I excitedly opened the door and ventured inside, trying to find Seth. Oh, there he was, out in the backyard, toasting marshmallows. And how adorable he looked in that sweater! But, oh, he wasn't alone. Another girl was sitting next to him. Seeing my confusion, Lillian led me outside. Autumn, this is our cousin, Charlie. Lillian pointed at the girl. And here is Seth. In case you didn't know, she teased me. Jesus, Lillian, keep it low-key. She left me as red as a tomato again. Then she winked at me and shooed us two to go inside to prepare drinks and salad while she and Trevor took care of the barbecue. So we did. And then I even helped Seth decorate the place with these cute twinkling lights. Romantic, right? Well, it would have been if Charlie wasn't here. She wouldn't leave him alone for a second. She didn't help out. She just sat there painting her nails. Ugh, jeez, couldn't she get the hint? So when Seth went to the bathroom, I walked up to her, and forcing a smile, I said, Hey, it's boring in here. Why don't you go outside? Nah, I'm good. She studied her newly painted nails. Lillian needs private time with her friend. Besides, Seth isn't comfortable around strangers. What? I went to the same school as him, so I was hardly a stranger. This girl was ruining my plans. Ugh, no! She was ruining my life. So far, my night wasn't exactly going to plan. Not only wouldn't Charlie let me anywhere near Seth, but she was acting weird around him. She actually took the bun off his burger and squirted sauce on it. Jeez, what was she, his mom? Then there was Trevor, 
who looked absolutely petrified as Lillian, on being attacked by some insect, clung to his arm. Huh? I thought he liked her. Whatever. I needed alone time with Seth, so I winked over at Lillian, but she just gave me this vacant look. I tried kicking her under the table, but she moved her foot away and still seemed oblivious. I'd had enough of this, so I went inside to make a hot chocolate. I heard footsteps behind me. Thinking it was Seth, I turned around ready to flirt. But, oh, it was just Trevor. When you go back over to your sweet Lillian, please tell her I don't have something in my eye. Instead, I was trying to make eye contact with her. Trevor grumbled out, Tell her yourself. She's not my Lillian. I came here for another reason. Hey, hey, why so grumpy all of a sudden? Jeez, I was just joking. He paused for a moment before he said, Um, Autumn, I like you. But Lillian just told me you like Seth. So I can't wait. Confused, I replied, Hold on, so you're telling me that you like me, not Lillian? Yeah, but your Seth plan will never work. Enough. I don't like you, now leave me alone. I stormed off, ready to impress the guy I actually like, instead of wasting my time with this nerd. Lillian's voice outside stopped me. What were you thinking? Why did you kiss Charlie? She's supposed to be our cousin. But she's not. And chill. Autumn isn't around anyway. Seth shrugged. She could walk out at any moment. We made a deal, so don't mess it up. Else I want my money back. What the? I felt the anger build up inside of me. I'm pretty sure smoke was coming out of my ears. I was about to walk out there to confront them when a hand pulled me back. I tried to tell you, but you didn't listen. Lillian is playing you just for your Chicago clothes suitcase. She loves it. And Seth is dating Charlie. They're both parts of Lillian's plan. She's paid them. Wow, this hurt. There I was thinking I had a great new friend and a potential new boyfriend, but it was all a trick. And for what? A suitcase with a few nice coats in it? I was deliberating what to do next when my phone beeped. It was a weather update. Turns out, the snowstorm was predicted to come sooner and be far worse than originally expected. Then all of our phones started buzzing. It was our parents. They told us to stay inside no matter what, and to make sure we closed all of the doors and windows. The storm soon arrived with vengeance. At first, the others seemed fascinated with staring out of the window at the snowflakes. Not me. Nope. I was just annoyed I couldn't escape these fake people and go home. We gathered around and set up a den in the living room. It was all okay until the phone signal started to go on and off. Then the internet went off completely. Lillian actually let out a scream and banged her phone screen when she realized her latest Instagram photo hadn't finished posting yet. Poor Trevor had to comfort her. It was time to make this night interesting. So smiling, I said, I know what will take your mind off it. Let's play truth or dare. Then I cuddled up to Seth and in a soft tone spoke. Seth, the storm is really freaking me out. He gave an awkward look but replied, It's cool. I'll look after you. Then he placed his arm around me. I looked over at Charlie. She didn't look bothered. Huh? That was odd. So when it was my turn to ask Charlie a truth, I said, I heard Lillian got that scar on her knee during a family trip. Could you tell us that story? Lillian flustered out. OMG, Autumn, your questions are so lame. You're wasting your turn. Charlie looked stunned at first, but then she quickly pulled herself together, laughed, then said, Yeah, Lillian's a goofball and trips over all the time. That time, we kids were having a soccer race, but Miss Competitive over here overdid it and ended up falling flat on the ground. Hmm, okay. So she didn't crack, but nor did she actually answer the question. Let's see how long you can keep up that fake facade for. As the night continued, the others seemed to be having a good time. Not me, though. I was still bitter about the whole situation. I was made to look like a fool by not only my friend, but also my crush. And his silly little GF. The annoying thing is if Lillian had just asked me, I would have let her keep whatever she wanted anyway, because I thought we were friends. 
<sighs> Lillian started yawning, then announced she was going to bed. No way am I sharing a bedroom with that traitor. And my love rival. No thanks. So I refused to move. But where will you sleep? Don't be ridiculous, Autumn. Yeah, come on in. You'll freeze to death down there. I'm fine. Just go. I'm a Chicago girl, remember? Do you call this a storm? Please. I've been through colder summer days. I smirked. But they kept going on and on. Nice try. As if you guys really care. Gotta give credit for their acting, though. Then at least let's get you some warmer clothes. I agree. But her suitcase is still in Trevor's car. I have an idea. She winked at me, then yelled up the hallway. Seth, could you please help Autumn get her winter clothes from Trev's car? Are you mental? It's freezing out there. And pitch black. You girls are so annoying. Eventually, Lillian and Charlie gave up trying to persuade me and threw me a blanket. Finally, some alone time away from those fakes. I curled up on the couch and took a deep breath to fall asleep. Only half an hour later, I was still tossing and turning. I had a lot on my mind, and the wind outside was howling. At that point, I pretty much had my head between my knees, trying to preserve my body heat. Jeez. It has for sure gotten colder. Then suddenly, I heard three consecutive knocks on the door. A chill ran down my spine. I must have misheard it, right? I held my breath to listen, and there came another three knocks. Oh my gosh, who could it be at this time? And in these conditions? Hi guys, it's me, Claire. So, tomorrow is going to be super exciting. I'm putting my life in your hands, literally, as I'm going to be doing a My Instagram Followers Control My Day video. Yay! Most influencers do this with options, but I trust you guys, so go wild. Just visit my Instagram, like this video, and comment on whatever you want me to do tomorrow. The comments with the most likes will be chosen. And don't forget to follow me to stay updated. As you can see, I'm Claire, and I'm a beauty influencer on Instagram. Of course, with this pretty face and eye for style, I already have loads of followers. But for someone who was born to be famous like me, that's not enough. That's why I'm doing this viral challenge. It'll get me tens of thousands of likes. Okay, that's it for today. Now I better get my beauty sleep. Gotta have glowing skin tomorrow. The first thing to do in the morning was to check my Instagram. 20,000 likes from my post last night. That's average. Let's see. I asked my followers to decide what I should wear and what I should eat for breakfast. And the most liked comments were about Y2K style and avocado toast. My favorite dish anyway. Easy peasy. I called the maid to prepare breakfast while I did my skincare routine. Then I made sure I took a cute selfie and uploaded it to my story. What a good start. Am I the cutest girl on earth or what? Okay, now I have to make a very difficult decision. Which bag best complements my outfit? This one or this one? I was still trying to decide when my phone rang. Ugh, that's Liam, my boyfriend. It's so early, yet he's already sent me a ton of messages. What are you doing? Why didn't you reply to any of my texts? Hurry up if you don't want to be late for school. All right, all right, I'm coming. Jeez, why does he have to be so stressy? It doesn't matter if we're a little late. I mean, come on, it's only school. After choosing the right bag, I got into Liam's car. He frowned at me and asked me what took so long. I was busy taking selfies. I replied and posted a mirror selfie I took earlier on my Instagram with the caption, Y2K style for today. What should I do at school this morning? At break time, I was sitting in the cafeteria with Liam and my bestie, Tori. As usual, my beauty was attracting attention. All eyes were on me, and one guy even gushed out, You're so pretty, Claire. <laughs> I checked my Instagram to see how my newly posted pic was doing. Oh, it already had 50,000 likes. That's good, but I know with my charisma, I can do even better. But, huh? What's this? 
The most liked comment on the post wants me to go to the school library and scream, I hate studying and the library is the most boring place on earth. What kind of request is this? Don't do it. I don't have a good feeling about this. It could be from someone who's trying to sabotage you. Liam has a point. This could just be a trick that Isabella, my rival at school, devised to embarrass me. She's also an influencer on Instagram, but she just copies everything I do. Her Instagram is 5,000 followers less than mine. Yawn! But Claire, how are you going to explain to your followers if you bail out? I don't think they'd be happy about it. Hmm, right. I'm doing a challenge, aren't I? Can't stop after only two comments, especially because one from anti-fan. Besides, this is no big deal, right? Who even goes to the library anymore? So, I dragged Liam and Tori to the library. As you know, I need them to film me. Huh? Why was it so ridiculously busy in here? Since when did people actually want to study? I needed to get this over with. So breaking through the silence, I shouted, I hate studying, and the library is the most boring place on earth. All eyes instantly fell on me, and I heard tuts and grunts. Then someone said, What the hell are you doing? Ugh, why is everyone in here so serious? I just shrugged and walked away. At least Liam and Tori had captured me at my best angle. To my surprise, that video gained me a load of views and likes, and I even earned nearly 1,000 more followers. Who would have thought that such a silly act would get so popular? At that moment, Isabella walked past me. Only brainless people would scream in the library. Huh, look who's jealous now. Hey, you might as well try that. Maybe you'll get half of my followers. Isabella looks like she's about to explode with anger. <laughs> But then she sneered and said, Let's see if you're still laughing after you see what you've got to do next. Huh? What is she on about? I immediately opened my Insta to check. What? The top comment this time was from Isabella. She wants me to put a trash bag on my head and go to the mall. Ew, trash bag? I spent an hour styling my hair this morning. Isabella, you wicked witch. But, okay, if she wants to play, I'll prove to her that she's messing with the wrong person. Just like last time, Liam tried to talk me out of it. This is nonsense, Claire. Don't lower yourself to this level just for a few likes. I told him he was overreacting, and that I wasn't going to let my followers down by bottling out of it. This seemed to annoy him, and he stormed off. Um, so who's going to take videos for me? I called out, but Liam just kept walking. Why can't he just support me like usual? Luckily, I still had Tori, and she agreed to film it for me. That's what best friends are for. Okay, this is more embarrassing than I thought. People keep staring at me like I'm an alien. I gave them a, what are you looking at, stare, prompting them to quickly turn away. No, I have to act confidently for the video to get more likes. Looking over... I saw Tori cheering me on, so I took a deep breath, stood up straight, and did my best catwalk strut through the mall. My heart was pounding like crazy, even after we walked out of the mall. Phew, it was finally over. I then quickly opened up my Insta, uploaded the video I just shot, then texted Liam asking where he was. After that, Tori and I got in a taxi to his house. Liam was already waiting for me at the door looking all serious when I got there. So I told Tori to wait in the taxi. Then angrily I shouted as I walked over to him, You could have at least come and supported me. Do you know how upset I was when you just left like that? I wasn't comfortable filming you make a fool of yourself. I care about you too much. It's just a bit of harmless fun. Why can't you understand how important being an influencer is to me? <sighs> I don't think I can be with someone who doesn't support me and my passion anymore. We should break up. Then I just walked away, not giving Liam a chance to explain. He quickly ran over and grabbed my hand. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we talk it out? <laughs> it worked! I gestured to Tori. Then, 
turned around with a big smile at Liam. Can you believe the followers want me to test your love by pretending to break up with you? I'll show them how much you love me. But then, unexpectedly, Liam angrily shouted, What? So, I'm just another tool to get likes for your Instagram? If you want to break up, then fine. We're done. Then he stormed into his house and slammed the door. I stood there open-mouthed. How could he break up with me? In the whole two years we've been together, I've never seen him this mad. I'll let him chill for a bit and talk to him tomorrow. He'll have calmed down by then. Right? Look, Claire! Your shopping mall video has already reached a hundred thousand likes! Oh my god, what is this? People are going crazy for my videos. They say I'm so confident, wearing a trash bag and still looking stylish. I look like Kendall Jenner. And my followers also increased by 5,000 people. At least this is worth the effort I put in. The next morning, I waited for Liam to pick me up. But he never arrived. When I got to school, I tracked him down and asked if he was still mad at me. You're so addicted to social media. I don't even know who you are anymore. Then he walked off. At that exact moment, Isabella walked towards me. Wait, why is Tori with her? Hey, loser. You're in so much trouble. What does that mean? I looked at Tori in confusion, but she just lowered her head and quickly followed Isabella. Feeling something was wrong, I immediately opened Instagram and... Oh my god. What are these comments? Such an attention seeker. She's willing to do anything just for some likes. I heard that her boyfriend broke up with her. No surprises there. <laughs> what is this? I did all these things at their requests, and now I'm the one receiving all the hate? Suddenly, the principal announced via the loudspeaker that I had to go to his office. As I walked in, I saw my parents sitting there. Turns out news of what I did at the library had spread. But not only that, someone even accused me of stealing from the shopping mall. Huh? I didn't steal anything. To prove my innocence, I gave the principal my bag to check. And he pulled out a brand new necklace. Why is this thing in my bag? I tried explaining myself, but no one would listen. I was suspended for a week. The walk out of the principal's office was the worst thing ever. Everyone was giving me judging looks and whispering to each other. On the way home, I took a teary selfie, then posted it on Instagram with the caption, Consequences of yesterday's challenge. One week suspension. Someone put the blame on me. Once home, my ashamed-looking parents immediately took my phone away and even disconnected the Wi-Fi. Ugh! My life was over! I ran up to my room in a huff and flopped down onto my bed. Suddenly, my eyes crossed a photo I took with Liam on my birthday last year. That's when Liam threw me a surprise party, and he even made me a cute birthday cake. Come to think of it, I was a bit too harsh with him yesterday. He was only trying to protect me. If I'd listened to him, I wouldn't have all these hate comments and be stuck home for a week. I hurt Liam just to gain more followers. How could I be so stupid? I wished I could apologize to him right now, but... <sighs> then to my surprise, after just three days, my mom told me I was allowed back to school. There were still mutters about me, but that didn't matter as Liam was waiting for me at my locker. I hurried over to him, apologized, and explained everything. Claire, I know you're the sweetest, most loving girl. You just got carried away with your frivolous Instagram popularity. Besides, I know you're not a thief. Then Liam told me that out of suspicion, he asked to check different CCTV at the shopping mall, and discovered that it was Tori who dropped the necklace box into my bag. Turns out, she was only hanging out with me because I was famous and rich. So when Isabella paid her, she turned 180 degrees, running after Isabella and playing tricks on me. Liam reported this to the principal, 
and now both of them have been suspended. That's it. Chasing after popularity on the internet didn't bring me any real friends, but only virtual fans, and a fake friend, sadly. I got blindsided by the likes and followers and overlooked what was truly important, my real-life relationships and the people who genuinely care for me. After that incident, I decided to deactivate my Instagram account for a while, at least until I feel stable again. And even if I lose all my followers, I don't really mind anymore. Because right now, I'm spending time with those who really matter to me.